left by monsters and by selfish men a tale of glory rents us under Alrighty, uh oh, my thing is off. Okay, well, hello everybody, for those of you who are here. Um, my name is Pixel, and we are Ages of Einor, and we are super excited to present to you today um, Waterdeep Dragon Heist. We're going to be um, streaming this every Friday at 7 p.m. Um, and yeah, we're super, super stoked to be um, bringing this to you guys. So, um, going to go over just like a couple of quick kind of housekeeping things as we get started then we're going to introduce all of our players and then we are going to get started with the um proper uh thing here hang on one second folks my thing is being nope i can't do that all right never mind um so uh, as i said my name is pixel um you can find me here on twitch at uh, twitch.tv slash hammer and pixel as well as on facebook at facebook.com slash um Hammer and Pixel. Uh, we are also running this um, under Ages of Einor, which is kind of like our D&D tabletop role-playing game thing that we do. Um, this is really the first like major stream that we're doing with that, so um, we're super excited for everybody that is hanging out. Um, and you can find that here on Twitch, obviously, at twitch.tv slash Ages of Einor, because you know that here you are. Uh, you can also find us on Facebook and Twitter at... Um, Ages of Einor in both places. Um, we do have some commands set up in chat. If you guys would like to um, hit exclamation point commands in chat, it'll tell you what all those are. Some of them will give you information on everybody's uh, social media and stuff like that. Um, so that way you can find where to find us in all the places that we are on the internet. Um, so a couple things before we get started. One, I'd like everyone to bear in mind when we switch over to uh, maps on the cam that you guys will be seeing the GM information on the maps so um please um uh, don't spoil anything for the folks uh, if they're also in chat they may be in chat trying to interact with you guys a little bit just try not to spoil any like oh there's enemies behind that door or whatever um you know oh i hope the you know ancient red dragon doesn't kill them or whatever because uh you know that will spoil the fun so uh keep that in mind and then two when it comes to like rulings and you know gm stuff Sometimes I play a little loose with it. Um, I can't remember every single rule off the top of my head. So if I screw up any rulings or anything like that, you know, you can let us know in chat. But if the moment has passed, we're probably not going to go back and fix it and try not to lose your mind or anything. So um, I appreciate the help. Also, if we have any technical issues, if anyone is not loud enough or anything like that, um, do let us know about that. Um, so outside of that, without further ado... Uh, we are going to get started introducing our players. So as I said, I'm Pixel. I'll be your GM today. And we are going to throw it over to Jacob, if you would introduce yourselves. And class, if you'd remember, we're not doing character introductions at this point. We're just doing uh, you as a human being, a real life person introduction. Uh, yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Jacob. Uh, I'm Jacob. That's okay. all I've got. Hi. <laughs> yeah. All right. Excellent. To the point. Um, well, welcome, <laughs> to the Jacob. Point. Um, okay, we are going to throw to Redbeard next. Greetings, everyone. My name is Redbeard the Pink. I am Pixel's brother. I am also a bit of an internet personality in my own right. I am fairly well known on TikTok, and I also have a Facebook page that I barely ever use, but I have recently started doing a little bit of game streaming on there. So you can find me on just about any social media platform. If you search Redbeard the Pink, I should come right up. But the two main one, the main one that I use is TikTok, and I'm also trying to break into the Facebook game a little bit. Awesome, awesome. Okay. Um, incidentally, I've posted the commands in chat, so you can see uh, there's commands for Pixel, Redbeard, um, Haley Comet, and Skull, who all have various social media presences. You can also go follow. Also, if you just hit exclamation point socials, it'll just dump all of those links 
um, at once. So uh, we will go ahead and skip over and talk to Trish, if you'd introduce yourself. I'm Trish. I've been playing Dungeons and Dragons for four years with uh, my two sons, Pixel and Red, and several other people also. I am actually the crotchety old hat lady, but due to thumb pain, pain I am not th currently crocheting. So that's me, Trish. Okay. And uh, we will throw to Beast next. Hey guys, um, I don't have any social media to plug. Please don't come find me. <laughs> if you want to find me, come here Friday nights to watch my brilliant performances. Um, and uh, we, we hope you guys enjoy the show. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, we will throw to uh, Skull next. Uh, hello. Well, my name is really Alec. Um, I go by Skull and my character. Um, you can go ahead and put... Uh, exclamation mark skull and that will go ahead and link you to the um uh to my gaming page well i'll i'm gonna be trying to streaming next week or so because i'm still trying to get it all the set up other than that that's that's about it gotcha yeah so we'll have our own uh fellow baby streamer here <laughs> skull will be over on facebook at skull killer 998 on facebook so uh and then Haley. uh i'm Haley comet I have a TikTok that I don't use nearly as much as I used to. Uh, I'm a wife to uh, the, the beard of red up there. And I'm looking forward to this. This is going to be fun. Awesome. Excellent. Okay. So um, without further ado, we are going to try to get started here. Um, I have somehow managed to mess up my OBS so I don't have chat in my uh, in my thing right at the moment, but that's okay. I will do my best to uh, keep up with that. So um, we are gonna go ahead and get started. So our story begins in Waterdeep, the city of splendors, the shining jewel of the Sword Coast, a vast metropolis full of the kaleidoscopic menagerie of life, merchants, nobles, beggars, Thugs, adventurers, tradesfolk, more. <laughs> Everything you could imagine. Hustle and bustle their way through the narrow streets. The smell of the sea is in the air, but the trees on Mount Waterdeep have already turned beautiful fall colors, as they have on the other side of the city, in the City of the Dead, the massive graveyard to the northeast side of the city, just south of the North Ward. And of course, it's even farther southwest of that, where we begin our tale. From the stately manors of the North Ward, past the raucous marketplaces of the Trades Ward, we reach the Dock Ward. The buildings of the Dock Ward are as unsightly and smelly and run down as the trade home, I'm sorry, as the homes of the North Ward are well-kempt and pleasant to look at. Here, in the Dock Ward, the press of life is condensed in on itself, the air is sour, the passers-by shuffle hurriedly from place to place, eyes shifting constantly to take in their surroundings. As we watch the press of the crowd, our focus is drawn to a particular door on a particularly run-down tenement. However, the door, a vibrant blue, catches our eye as it swings open to reveal a woman. Uh, Mel, would you please describe your character? As Mel wanders out of the doorway... You see her, she is possibly middle-aged human woman with dark hair, lots of gray streaks. She walks out confidently, looks to the left and the right, darts around the side of the building and begins down a lane that leads to another lane and then another and eventually to a hillside at the outskirts of, uh, of her neighborhood where there is apparently a cistern or kind of a hidden cave in the hillside looking around to be sure she isn't followed, Mel rushes into the cave and in the semi-darkness, she scurries to one side, kind of finds a clef in the rock, moves some things out of the way and reaches in. She pulls out a, a bag, a lumpy kind of a smallish sort of a bag that jingles as she grabs it. She opens it up, looks in and pulls out, are those marbles? No. <laughs> Those are ball bearings. She looks at one or two of them, particularly one of them holding it up in the semi-light. She can see that it looks odd, kind of roughened. 
almost as if someone took a bite out of it. She chuckles it, puts it back in the bag, and secretes the bag on her person. Reaching back into the hole, she grabs a couple of other things, sticks them in some pockets, and putting everything back the way it was, Mel leaves her little niche and heads confidently down the lane back into town towards the shabby end of the trades ward. She's looking around and notices a place that she thought was there. It's a used clothing store and Mel darts inside. She looks around for a sales clerk. Oh, hello there, love. What can I do you for? Hello. I'd like to buy a skirt. A wraparound skirt. A uh, skirt, you say? Right, well, we've got plenty of them. Uh, and so the uh, the shopkeeper is... <laughs> I see you, Vincent Page. Uh, the shopkeeper is... Um, a uh, middle-aged man, uh, balding on top, has a uh, little mustache and goatee. Um, he's dressed in kind of uh, middling clothes with like a vest on and like a white kind of uh, longer shirt, like a you know, uh, and breeches and and boots. And he sort of takes you around uh, and shows you um, to a rack that has some serviceable uh, light linen skirts, um, even though the weather is kind of turning. Um, Waterdeep is still a coastal city, and so um, quite a bit of the time it is still moderately climate. Um, you know, the, the climate is moderate. So I'll take that one. It's blue. I like blue. And although Mel is currently wearing very shabby, one could call men's clothes, she takes the blue wraparound skirt and wraps it around herself and ties it into a knot and looks at herself and says, that's the one. That's what I want. It'll do nicely. Right, sure then. Well, uh, let's see here. That will be... Uh, uh, uh. He sort of like looks at it, appraises it, looks you up and down and says, That'll be two silver. All right. I can do that. And Mel turns around away from him and shuffles in a pocket and pulls out, holds out her, her hand and there are two silver pieces in there. And she says, here you are and thank you very much. And uh, before he takes the, the silver as he's kind of folding the skirt up on the counter to hand it over, he says, right. And uh, will you be needing anything else? Oh, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think I need anything else. No. Right. Well, if you don't know, I certainly won't. So I think let's just, uh, he sort of takes the coins and hands you the, uh, the, uh, the skirt. Having it all then rewrapped around herself, Mel strolls out the door. Okay. Uh, as she strolls out the door into the, um, afternoon sunlight, uh, as a breeze sort of wafts in off the ocean, um, Mel hears carried on the breeze, uh, a a sound of children playing. Uh, she can hear just sort of the giggling and howling laughter of a small group of children. And as you turn and look across the way, you see in a uh, courtyard in between some buildings, a group of uh, three or four kids that appear to be playing a game of tag. There's, um, you know, probably two younger girls and three young boys that are sort of rambunctiously chasing each other around and playing tag and, you know... Um, you're it, and oh no, you pushed me too hard, you pushed me down. You know, they're just like, they're having a good time and giggling and laughing. and uh, Being very interested in what's happening, Mel reaches in an additional pocket, pulls out a shiny red apple, and she sits down on the curb and starts to munch. They're having a good time, but she looks very serious as she's watching them. I wonder what she's thinking as she, her eyes dart from one to the other, and she watches them run and kind of jump and play and have a good time. Mel looks very serious. But when the apple is done, she just looks at the core, tosses it into the nearby gutter. She climbs back to her feet and Mel strolls down the street. Okay. Um, and as Mel strolls down the street, our view sort of uh, zooms out a little bit. Um, she, Mel is headed from the trades ward back towards the dock ward, kind of back the way that she came. But our camera leaves her and goes the other way, headed north to the North Ward, uh, right at about the southern end of the North Ward, where we find a, uh, a young woman 
at a uh, what appears to be some sort of market stand. You can see painted on a little sign on the bottom at the front of the stand um, behind which the woman is standing. You can see a um, somewhat simply painted honeycomb uh, on the stand. Um, Beatrice, if you would please describe your character for me. Up, oh, Beatrice is muted. My bad. Beatrice is a rather short but human woman with long curly brown hair and she looks like homely I would say she's homely <laughs> and she is currently selling honey of all different uh flavors and she seems to be having a good day as she's doing it uh greeting everybody very uh happily and yeah. thanking them very graciously for their purchase excellent yeah so a few transactions go off without a hitch folks are coming in, and there appear to be uh several different kinds of honey of uh different varieties here on the uh on the tabletop in front on that on the countertop here in front at the at the um, stand in front of uh, Beatrice and um, several folks come and they sample some different honeys and coins exchange hands and um, you know she's she's made a few sales and then a uh, individual comes up uh, who is kind of a rough looking fellow um, in a what appear to be sailor's clothes uh, and he says um, he comes up and says hey hey there you you uh remember me from from yesterday, right? Or the sort day of, before? Yeah, and he sort of seems a little like shaky and unwell. He says, uh, well, listen that oh and he kind of like turns and like actually hurls a little bit over to the side oh, of the Oh my gosh, are you okay? No that honey wine or whatever it was you sold me done twisted my stomach up and oh god's kinda nuts. I don't and he, he he seems like he's gonna be upset and kind of take issue with you but he's like seems to be so sick that he just stumbles off into an alleyway and uh and several of the other people who were maybe planning on coming up to the stand sort of see this interaction and kind of like and like you know doo -doo -doo -doo, off the other way and and the area out in front of the stand which was kind of hustling and bustling for a minute um sort of clears up a little bit uh and you're you're left uh without a whole lot of customers for the moment <clears throat> <sighs> well crap Really got to work on that recipe. Yeah, and uh, shortly after you uh, you say that, you see another woman comes up to you. She is um, older than you are, um, probably into her 50s or 60s, it seems, kind of has uh, curly graying hair. <clears throat> uh, and she, you, you look and you recognize this woman. Um, you know that she is, uh, you know whose wife she is. And she comes up and, and um, seems to like, take a minute to think through what she's going to say and steal herself before she comes to talk to you and says, uh, um, Beatrice. Yeah. Uh, how are things going with the honey stand? Well, it hit and miss. I have good days and I have bad ones. I've recently been trying to do a honey wine and it's, um, not going so well, but I'll get the hang of it. She sort of, Sniffs the air and glances down at the mess the other man left and sort of says like, oh, all right. Well, um, what I wanted to talk to you about was, I wanted to talk to you about my husband, Beppis. Um, right. You, uh, well, you know what, what my mother said, that he ran off with some other family, but... I don't, I don't know. I just don't think he would do something like that. Do you really think he um, would leave you in the stand and me and Georg? No, those are the two most important things in his life was this stand and his family. And I can't imagine him leaving either one of them. It's only been a month, but I fear the worst. Oh, I know you... Well, you're young and you're much more capable than I am. And I, I have my hands full keeping the house in order. I don't want him to, if he comes back, I don't want him to come back to a shambles. But I don't know. Would you, would you look, please? I'll look into it. 
thank you. I have for a moment worried that you would listen to my to my mother and not think he had run off on us. You know, I I never really liked her. She seemed she seems off. <laughs> yes. Well, I I can't say thank you enough. Please let me know if you find anything. I will. And she sort of breathes a sigh of relief, um, and even as she turns away, however, you can see the tension kind of crawl back into her shoulders as she sort of uh, makes her way off uh, through the streets. Um, and then um, a, a short while later, you can kind of see we're approaching the uh, point of the day where shops are closing up, and that last rush was really the, you know, the kind of last people trying to make a purchase, and so Beatrice begins to kind of close down shop and appear to uh, prepare for the next part of her day. And at that point, we will throw over to... Um, we kind of zoom back out of the North Ward. Um, and I think maybe Beatrice closes up shop and we follow her back down as she actually heads towards the Dock Ward as well. However, um, as she passes a particular alleyway, um, we break from uh, watching Beatrice... And we see um, a group of individuals that are huddled around a, in an alley uh, next to a um, a barrel that has been uh, treated with, um, you know, resin, and it seems somewhat flame resistant. And they're um, standing around as the as the refuse that is inside the barrel is has been lit on fire. Um, and uh, we see a. Um, we see this group and we kind of look, we zoom past them, we're in the alleyway and the camera kind of turns and we see uh, back onto the street as um, one of them turns and catches the eye of a, and his eyes catch, it seems, on a young woman uh, who has, um, is kind of... Um, Making a last-minute trade, we're in a much shabbier part of town, so it's a much more run-down stand, and she appears to be buying um, some fruit that is, you know, doesn't look great, seems edible, but is not in great shape. Uh, and as she is kind of getting her things ready to purchase uh, what her, you know, her to make her purchase here, um, we see the individual next to the fire sort of look left and right, and then he darts out of the alleyway and snatches uh, the sack containing a few coins out of this woman's hand as he begins to uh, rush off uh, down the street. Um, and as we do, we pan back to the fire um, and uh, Redbeard, if you would please describe a character. Okay. <clears throat> Well, when we uh, when we pan back to the fire, one of the people, uh, one of these kind of hobo characters who was standing around and appears to be missing, there's one less person there, and uh, the camera catches up to Redbeard, who is uh, he's sort of making a, a break to chase this guy who has just just robbed this woman. He is using the uh, the alleys and his knowledge of the local streets to kind of you know he's he's trying not to draw attention to himself, so he's not moving as quickly as this guy is, but he knows the city a little better. So he's able to keep up using shortcuts and things. And he's actually wearing this kind of tattered shawl as he's standing near the fire. He just peels that off and drops it in the street. And uh, as the man kind of makes his way through this market, Redbeard is staying pretty close to him, but um, and he, uh, the camera would see a man whose face looks more or less like mine, uh, but he's dressed in, in gray, very roguish clothes, uh, shoulder to toe gray. And uh, as he's chasing this guy, the guy is, is kind of feels like he's maybe being made. So he keeps checking over his shoulder. And as Redbeard moves through this market, he's, you know, he grabs a hat and kind of puts it on his head and then stands still for a second. So he looks like somebody else just at a, at a glance. And then he keeps tailing the guy. He finds, uh, finds a cloak at another stall. And he's kind of pilfering these things uh, as the shopkeepers are looking the other way. And he just keeps, as he moves through the market, he continues to change his appearance a little bit. He'll drop drop his hat at another stall, pick up a different one and put that on. And he kind of keeps doing that until uh, until it seems like the guy's getting to a more secluded part of the city. Yeah, so um, we see the fellow, um, <clears throat> he has been, as you said, kind of looking over his shoulder very consistently. Sorry, my computer keeps trying to give me notifications at the absolute worst time here, folks. Um, 
I'm trying to turn it off while so it doesn't bug us. But anyway, we'll just carry on. Um, so yeah, we see him uh, as as Redbeard the Gray is um, swapping out uh, various parts of minute disguises just to give himself the cover he needs. As this guy is kind of tailing and looking back and forth, um, he this uh, this guy makes his way into a quite secluded alleyway. Uh, and looks around left and right, doesn't really see anyone, uh, and then goes to um, examine the, the the coin purse that he got. He goes to, you know, grab it and, and uh, pull out the contents of it. Okay. So once he starts getting to a more secluded area, at that point, instead of the disguises, uh, Redbeard is using the shadows to uh, for cover to kind of keep step with this guy. And... Um, and make sure he doesn't lose him, basically. And so, as the dude is continuing to check check over his shoulder, uh, and especially once he gets to the alley and stands still, he will uh, he, there for a few seconds. He'll think he sees something out of the corner of his vision, and so he'll look, and it's gone. And then he'll hear a noise behind him, and he'll turn around and whirl around and look there, and it's gone. And he for for a little bit there, he just gets the sense that someone or something is moving closer and closer to him. And he's really kind of freaking out about it, but he can't see where the thing is. And he finally just whirls around in the street a few times um, until until he's able to establish that he is actually alone in the street and there's no one around. <clears throat> yeah, and so once he once he feels that he's alone, um, he goes to pull out the uh, the coin purse and dump the coins into his hand and notices that he doesn't have the coin purse anymore. He starts to pat himself down, you know, like he didn't think he put it anywhere, but he's like rubbing his brown and, and, and seems angry and frustrated as he can't, like doesn't understand, you know, what could possibly have happened to it. So while he's doing that, Redbeard is going to retrace his steps back towards where the woman was robbed. As he goes, he is actually taking the, so everything that he took from one place uh, whether it's on his person or whether he dropped it somewhere, he's going to go through and just as sneaky as he took the stuff, he is actually going to put it all back where he found it. And anything that actually of his that he dropped to, to switch his disguise out, he'll pick that up as he goes and take it, take it with him. And um, towards the end of it, if the woman is still nearby, he's going to kind of you know parkour his way up till he's a little bit higher than she is, uh, find an opportunity to drop the coin purse from overhead so that it's going to land in front of her. And then he heads back towards the trash fire, picks his little tattered shawl back up and goes back to warming his hands. Excellent. Okay. Um, and as we follow the smoke from the fire up into the air, we sort of um, make our way just not actually not too far away, maybe four or five blocks over to another alleyway where uh, actually just outside of, um, of a well-known tavern and uh we find another individual who uh appears to be sleeping uh on the ground um in just on the ground in in a dirty damp ta uh, damp um alleyway uh oz or osmandius if you would please describe your character yeah uh Slumped over in this kind of dirty puddle is a human uh, with, even in this dirty, disgusting spot, he's got this perfectly curly hair that drops down just over his face. His hair's still perfect. He's in, He's got this uh, cut jawline with just enough stubble. He's a beautiful man uh, who is just in a really bad spot. Um, his jacket is torn and ratty and underneath are the clothes of uh of a pauper just another poor person uh in one hand he has a completely empty bottle of wine uh, and in the other hand he has a half empty cup that has some refuse from the alley that may have slipped into it a little bit and he is snoring along kind of slumped over on a pile of garbage yeah, and he's so he's snoring along, slumped on a pile of garbage. And I think in the in the soundtrack here we hear the like 
you know we hear like the mute the morning music and then all of a sudden out of nowhere splash and uh the the cue changes rapidly as water sl- is just like sloshed across this man's face uh, he, <laughs> yeah he blinks and opens up his eyes and sees standing above him uh with a grim uh grimace on his face is a man uh, in a breastplate and kind of like plate armor, sort of maybe half plate. He has like thigh coverings uh, with a massive um, broadsword on his back. Um, very, very nice looking broadsword. He has kind of um, wind blown, tousled, uh, blondish hair um, and a very square set jaw and, and heavy set deep eyes. Um, and the man says, uh, Hey, you there, Oz? No. Got that? Got that coin you owe me, boy? Is that Maloon? Oh. Yeah. What are you doing oh, out here, no. sweet sleeping? You should be making back that loan I gave you. One second. Hold on, I'm waking up. It's... And Oz kind of sits against the wall and looks at his cup, and he takes a deep drink and makes a grimace. Ooh. And then finishes the drink. Uh, and he's, All right. Uh, sorry, I was taking a, a nap. I've had a busy day. I, I will get you the money. I owe it. This was an investment, Maloon, and it's a very smart one. Believe me, I'm actually later today. I'm going to collect. As a matter of fact, I have a big payday planned, uh, and I'll get you your money in a couple of days. Right. Well, listen, all I'm saying is I'm losing patience now. <sighs> you know, I'm not the type to go around cracking skulls or breaking legs or any of that, you know, shark type of crap. But you're testing a man's patience is all I'm saying. And I would prefer if our relationship were not to sour any further, Oz. Could you talk just a little bit quieter? He leans in real qu- close and whispers and says, Get me my money. You got it, pal. Uh, and it. he sort of like throws the, the bucket that he had splashed the water of kind of like Poo! into into Oz's chest as Oz is uh, uh, maybe like knocked back against the wall of the alley a little bit. And uh, and Maloon grumbles as he walks off. Um, Oz. Oh. Okay. And he holds onto the bucket just because he thinks he might need it in a minute. Uh, and he stands up and he looks at the sun. And he's like, I'm... Oh, oh, no, I'm late. And, and Oz takes off uh, at a like a hobbling sprint. Yeah. Uh, towards the docks yeah and and as we follow oz for a short way every two or three blocks he has to either like stop and pant heavily or uh you know he i don't he i don't know we're not sure if he needs the bucket we don't ever find out but there's there are a couple (laughs) close calls uh and then as we as he passes a another particular uh uh shop in the dock ward um, we turn from Oz and we go into the store, uh, and it, this is a, um, a small tavern, quite seedy. The folks in here are, um, just ne'er-do-wells abound, right? Uh, the air is sort of smoke-filled, uh, the smell of stale beer has soaked into the, uh, into the floor, and there is, uh, you know, a gruff half-orc man behind the bar and then we actually pass behind the bar itself through a through a door and down a hallway into a back room of this establishment and around sitting around a table are uh, about five individuals <clears throat> that appear to be playing some sort of uh, some sort of card game uh arlo if you would please describe your character for us uh, yes, I am a dark elf, blue, uh, I want to say white, long hair, uh, as well as a majestic beard. <laughs> um, hard to miss by, and you can always tell by the red eyes that I have. <laughs> um, other than that, I mean... Yeah, 
Yeah, excellent. So with that dark elf ancestry, the dark skin, the the blue and the white hair, but uh, he's kind of hiding his face maybe a little bit under his cloak, uh, staring at a at a um, hand full of cards. Um, and we we kind of zoom out and we see the other folks sitting around the table. We have a uh, we have a wood elf man uh, with kind of a notch in his eyebrow and his long pointy ears with sort of brown hair um, streaked with gray a little bit. Um, but still the sort of elegant, ageless elven features, uh, who is sort of has some sort of, he has like a kind of a toothpick in his mouth, uh, and is, um, leaning back and looking at his cards. We see a very burly individual, you know, broad shouldered, kind of a V cut into his shirt with some, um, you know, uh, with some chest hair, dark, um, curly mop of hair and a, and a big bushy black beard, and he he sits much closer to his cards with uh and and his eyes dart back and forth. Um, right next to Arlo, we see a uh, a woman. Um, she's actually a um half elf woman. It seems um she has kind of lighter blonde hair, um and a very composed uh, elvish face. Um, and we see she's, um, you know, she has actually maybe the largest pile of gold in front of her and she's got one eyebrow cocked as she sort of looks around the group, um, holding her cards. We see that she has a, uh, a, um, bracelet on her wrist. Um, everyone in the room is relatively well armed. Uh, they seem comfortable, you know, with their weapons by their sides as well. Um, and then the last individual that we see is a uh, gnomish woman um, with um, a rather kind of elegant and abstract set of like jewelers eyepieces kind of perched on some goggles on her head. Um, she has like a bright um, green shock of hair that kind of comes to a point. Um, and they all sort of like look at each other back and forth. It appears that the betting is passed. There's a pile of money in the middle of the table. Uh, and then Arlo, if you would, please. I feel like you want to go all in with that pile of ca uh, gold that you have there. Uh, to this, the, the burly man kind of looks around and grunts and says, mm. Yeah, I'll call that. And so he, uh, he shoves a pile of... Uh, pile of gold into the middle of the table as he as he was doing that i go ahead and switch one of the cards to to uh to an a yeah uh, one of the yeah and i think in this set of cards the they're actually the high cards are dragons um and it's uh so you it's it's this arc you know this artfully painted um dragon on the cards and so you have like you know what what was a relatively low hand suddenly became like three of a kind of dragons and you know a pair of kings or something uh and so as arlo uh as the as all the betting resolves you know um arlo slaps the cards down on the table and says uh read them and weep uh and everyone at the table kind of groans uh, as they lay down their own cards showing uh that they've lost the hand and arlo as you go to uh collect your winnings you reach out to the middle of the table and unfortunately your the side of your robe catches on the table a little bit and like two or three cards come spilling out of your sleeve uh and there's a moment of there's a moment of shock in everyone's eyes and they kind of look at each other and then like the the tension in the room just ratchets up a thousand percent as everyone's hands slowly begin to go towards their their weapons I put my hand on on the on the woman's uh, wrist and be like, "Now, now, let's not all be too hasty here." As I as I slip the bracelet out of her hand and grab gather all my my grab gather all my winnings. <laughs> yeah, and I, and I think yeah, as you go to grab the winnings, uh, you you know everyone's distracted by grabbing their weapons. You go to grab the winnings. You manage to uh, successfully pull off the first part of your your subterfuge. But as you go to get the winnings, a dagger like slams into the table in front of your hands, uh, and you quickly realize that this uh, this moment has gone sideways. So as the uh, the um, thing hits the table um four orbs of light sort of pop up in front of your face um it's not much light but it's just enough in this dark room to sort of uh throw everyone off the off of their eyes off of you for just a second as they blink and by the time they're done blinking of course your excellent elven dark vision you kept your eyes closed as you cast the spell 
um, dancing lights, uh, and your eyes were perfectly well adjusted to the darkness as you as you slip out of the room and begin to race through the streets of the city. So you we see the door to the back room just like bam burst open and out comes Arlo, followed by all of these characters, individuals <laughs> grumbling and rubbing their eyes and drawing weapons. Uh, everyone in the bar sort of looks up and watches this crew as Arlo like jumps up on a table and dances and the big burly guy like knocks the table completely out of the way. The two people uh, sitting at the table, uh, there's a, a sailor and what appears to be a, um, a woman uh, in sort of like plain peasant's clothes. They quickly grab their drinks as the table goes flying and then they just proceed to drink them. Uh, <laughs> the vibe in the establishment is clearly that like this is not actually that surprising as Arlo dances from table to table <laughs> with elvish grace and the, the other people come barreling out behind him they burst into the street light as we hit uh it, the sun is beginning to set at this point the evening is coming on and uh, arlo is racing through the street um you know kind of ducking through stalls and jumping over using his uh, excellent elven uh, dark sight to stay in the or um, stay in the the shadows as uh, but nevertheless, he can't sh seem to shake his pursuers. Uh, between the five of them, they are still hot on his heels as he makes his way uh, all the way across the dock ward to um, to a building, uh, the name of which I need to go look up real quick. As he makes his way to um, a building... Um, just north of, in a, in a, it looks, appears to be a warehouse, uh, near the mist shore, north of Sale Street and east of Sea Lion Street, uh, on a, a cul-de-sac that has a bunch of, uh, warehouses in it. Um, and, uh, standing outside the door of one of these warehouses, and at this time of day, things have pretty well closed up shop. And so there's not actually a lot going on and but for some reason there are a number of rather burly individuals standing outside the door of this particular warehouse uh, and arlo uh, as he's racing uh, out of a nearby alleyway and headed for that door uh, they all sort of cock their heads and look at arlo and then uh, a moment later a flash of recognition comes by as they spread their ranks for a moment for as arlo darts into the door and uh, shortly as his pursuers return, uh, all of the men close ranks uh, and draw their own weapons, um, outnumbering and outgunning, it seems, uh, the pursuers. And as you, uh, as you go back into, as you, as you dart into the door, Arlo, you turn and look and you have one last parting shot for the, uh, for the individuals who are chasing you. I go and I wave my hand as they see the bracelet on me. Yeah, so the bracelet jangles on your wrist as you uh, flaunt your uh, flaunt your <laughs> your ill-gotten gains in the face of those that would have uh, that would have uh, chased you. However, uh, it's clear from the setup that they know they're quite outmatched by the uh, the bouncers of this establishment as you enter in, um, and we cut very quickly to um, there is a man's face. Um, and there is a fist about a half an inch from that man's face. Uh, Bill, please describe that face for us. Uh, Bill, Bill's not the biggest guy in the, in the room, but um, he, he does seem to be just about the angriest. Uh, his, he's, he's got a, he's got a uh, nice high cheeks. He's pretty lean. Um, you can tell his nose has probably been broken and reset a couple of times with not a lot of, uh, of attention drawn to how straight it is uh, afterwards. Uh, <clears throat> he's got a big purpley gash up, this, uh, up his left side, um, stretching just up to where his ribs start, all the way down to about his hip. Uh, and you can tell that this is this is a wound that, while not recent, is still kind of healing. And um, and uh, just drenched in sweat, kind of dancing back and forth. Fist right here, I yeah, believe. Yeah. So um, we we see the fist, uh, and the fist has sort of a uh, light greenish cast to it, uh, and is big. Um, maybe almost as big as uh, about half of Bill's entire face. 
Uh, and Bill, it seems, uh, just from his posture, we see in kind of slow motion as he has tried to dodge uh, this this fist, but uh, has miscalculated as we see it, and we see the shock wave radiate through Bill's face as this greenish fish, uh, and then shortly after the impact, we resume into real speed, we watch Bill stagger back, and another fist kind of comes and cuts up under, and slams into the wound itself, as Bill sort of like, Puh! and a little bit of like blood sort of comes out of the mouth the, the mouth, uh, the individual in question, we now pan and see the rest is a, you know, very tall, quite well um, built um, burly half-orc man with a cleft palate he's got a split in his lip um, and he is bald, has sort of um, pointyish ears. Uh, you can see just the just the little bit of tusk sort of coming out on the bottom lip. Uh, and he sort of uh, after he punches in the in the right in the wound, sort of like sh takes both fists on uh, Bill's collarbones and just shoves him back. Uh, Bill, right after he got hit, sort of took two quick punches to the man's gut, keeping his focus despite. The, uh, dis despite the situation, so the man um, pushes him away, uh, and then there's a, a short moment while they circle each other, and the half orth man uh, squints, um, and he, he hawks and spits, a uh, spits right into Bill's eye. <laughs> you son of a... Bill just absolutely insulted, wiping this greasy spit out of his face smearing a little bit of blood and honestly not really improving the situation just flying into a complete unsensical rage <laughs> and that's when bill attacks one after another he's just throwing these big round meaty hooks into this guy He's screaming at him. Oh, I was your mother a hill giant? Come and get it. And he's just pounding this guy. You hear the wet slap of meat on meat. And then eventually you hear that sickening crunch as he's probably just broken a rib, maybe two. He's really softening him up. And then like a wildcat, Bill leaps on top of this, this gigantic opponent and like a falling tree just kind of rides him into the mat all the while punching furiously flicking blood and sweat into the crowd after raising each and every blow down on this guy just ah! yeah and so as bill is just pounding and he has lost his mind and the crowd which was screaming and hollering at the fight actually falls quite silent and the only sound that you hear is the horrifying and sickening thud of these fists slamming into this giant half-orc man as uh and after a few moments of this unable to take it any longer we see two individuals who sort of break through the crowd and rush into the ring to grab under each arm of Bill and struggle and, and pull him off of this half-orc man as we see Oz and Arlo <laughs> have have grabbed. Uh, and they are they are not, uh, Arlo is quite tall, Oz is um, not. Uh, but Bill, you know, he's surprisingly strong, but also not a big man. But it takes both of them to subdue and drag him off uh, of this individual. Um, Let me go, you big blue... <laughs> And they uh, they drag him into, uh, as the crowd is silent, they drag him through the crowd into a back room in this establishment and sort of shove him through the door and close the door behind themselves. Oh, what was that? He spat in my face. I know he did, but it's a fight. It's going to happen. That was not the plan. Today was supposed to be the big payout. Do you know how many people bet on you? How, how I sold you? There'll be more fights. There, there'll be more fights, but we won't have any money to pay for the venue anymore. And even well, that's because you that. keep drinking it, you oh. silly, silly little man. I, oh, I'll, I'll let him fight me next time. He I don't even think we're going to even have a uh, fight with him almost dead. Ah, oh, come on. Guy as big as he is, he's probably getting up right now for seconds. 
we pan back out to the <laughs> we pan back out to the uh to the to the to the mud uh and it's like and they're in sort of a wooden building a warehouse um and there's a section of the of the of the floor um that was kind of empty and like straw has been strewn across it um and it's you know quite a bit of like sweat and people have tracked mud in here and laying on that dirty floor is uh still one very unconscious half orc uh, and we sit with that for just a moment about you know two or three seconds of just silence as we everyone sort of stares at this guy uh and then you see people be begin to hustle in there uh actually a um a man comes up uh, who is surprisingly well dressed for uh, for being in a in a place like this, uh, and and seems to takes a, a bottle out of his pocket and administers um, something to the fellow, which seems to revive him as he uh, uh, begins to drag him off uh, out the front door, and then we uh, we we pan back to uh, our individuals in the in the back room. Uh, are you kidding? I think I broke my hand on that guy's face. Look, I'll wrap it up. I think it's already wrapped. He's not even there anymore, I promise you. Uh, all right, look. I'll throw the fight next time. You fix Will the Will there bets. even be a next time? Uh, After uh, what happened? No one's going to even want to fight you. Oh, come on. We're, look, we'll, we'll find another league. They're all over this, this darn dock ward. There's the other warehouses. Come on, guys. We got a sweet deal going. Don't let me down now. I, I swear I'll hold up my end of the bargain. All right. That's next time. But right, right now I have to go give out their money that they all won. Oh, as I go, I the as money. I go out and slam the door. Hey, what about my pay? You'll get your pay when, when we're back home. All right. You there, Ozzy boy. Yeah, here, let me fix you up. Come on. And give me some uh, wine. <laughs> I'm I'm all out. I, I can't I, see. We don't exactly have a stocked bar here, but here, you gotta me cut help. me, Oz. You gotta cut me. Yeah, cut I can what are you talking about? And Oz just cast cure wounds uh, <laughs> to fix up Bill's injuries. Okay. Um, and as uh, as the flash of uh, of arcane power uh, emits from Oz's uh, Oz's hands. Actually, Oz, uh, what does it look like when you cast Cure Wounds? Uh, Oz sits down and uh, places a hand on uh, Bill's shoulder and just kind of hums a melody to himself. And as he hums, he kind of glows with this uh, arcane power that kind of sort like courses through his hand and lights, uh, and the light kind of transfers from his body to uh, Bill and that light travels to the wound as the wounds start to seal up. Yeah, excellent. And uh, and so as the wound sort of seals up in this flash of of bluish light, um, we uh, we cut just like a smash cut, bam, and we are in a tavern, a quite a lively tavern now. Um, the inside of the place is relatively clean and well kept uh, as we sort of sit and we see our collected group of the characters we have followed are now currently all sitting around a single table in the back corner of this tavern. And uh, we sort of um, catch on them for a second and then pan around and you can see uh, there is a um, middle-aged man with salt and pepper hair, quite well built behind the, behind the tavern. He has kind of longish hair flopped off to one side with a bit of a curl in the front and a well-kept beard. Uh, you can see uh, on the wall behind him on the bar, yet still within easy reach, is a massive and magnificent two-handed sword um, glittering in the, in the torch and candlelight. Uh, and the bar is quite rambunctious. There's a um, a blonde barmaid, um, sort of curly hair, slight build, and a green um, green apron who is making her way around to various tables, carrying food and beverages. And we see as she carries around, uh, she comes close to the edge of a um, a rather odd fixture in this particular tavern. There is a uh, enormous hole <laughs> in the floor. Uh, the hole in the floor of this tavern is approximately 
oh, 20 feet or so across. Thir oh, no, heavens, 35 feet or so across. Uh, there is a waist-high um, stone ring around, almost as if it's a giant well. Uh, and then built out over the hole is a uh, wooden scaffold with a... Um, pulley system and a basket that appears large enough for several people to uh to get inside that it seems is raised and lowered uh from this uh from this place uh, our our friends are in the yawning portal one of the more famous uh taverns uh in the dock ward of uh waterdeep and uh, all around, again, you can see this is a bar that is um, often frequented by adventuring types. Uh, so there is a wide cast of characters here um, as, uh, as, we, as we peel in and sort of zoom in on all of our, uh, all of our main characters. As you guys now uh, have a, a brief moment, um, what, uh, what are you doing? What are you all saying to each other? Uh, after the day that you've all just had, uh, you are hanging out once again, as you typically do a couple of times a week here at the Yawning Portal. So Bill <clears throat> is now uh, fully clothed, unlike when we saw him before, where he was naked and sweaty. Uh, Bill is, is, is wearing clothes that... Um, you might see a merchant or a tradesperson wearing kind of like a, a, a custom fitted suit. Clearly he spent a little bit of money on it. Um, a little bit, uh, maybe an insight into, into how well his, his boxing career is actually going. Um, and he looks around the table and you can tell, you can tell he's about to say something that everybody is going to groan about. And he goes, hey, guys, guys, I came up with a new joke. You want to hear it? It's yeah. about that first job we did. So I goes to the doctor, right? And I, and I say, doc, I'm bleeding. I'm dying. You got to help me. And he's going, oh, what happened? Go, well, you never believe it, doc. A reanimated skeleton stabbed me right in the kidney. And he goes, wow. Aren't you glad you missed all those ribs? And I said, Doc, that's how this happened in the first place. Uh, <laughs> I don't care. Oh, come on! I chuckled. <laughs> ah, fine. I'll, I'll get a new joke next week. Please. That's don't. what you say every week, Bill. But it's getting better, right? <laughs> You don't look so good. Don't quit your day job, Bill. <laughs> yeah, you got you got a couple head. They got a couple headshots on Bill last week. Rather than answering, Beatrice is just going to take a long swig of her drink. Oh, that reminds me. As I go ahead and give Oz and Bill their their winnings, which is one uh, one silver each. That's our winning from last week. Where's the rest of it? Excuse me. That's that's what happens when we put all our money to tell them that he's going to lose. Stupid, stupid. <sighs> you, you bet on Bill to lose, but Bill's a wonderful fighter. Bill's you, in on the thanks, gig. Mel. It's Bill knew he was supposed to lose. I didn't think he would go down with just a few dozen punches to the face. Come on. How do you win a fight on accident? <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you guys are going to be fixing fights, you might want to pick a, a, a stooge who's not certifiably insane. Come on. He loses his temper like that. Well, I owe Maloon War Dragon 200 gold. And whose fault is 200 that? 200 gold? You better I, keep my name out of your mouth the next time. It was time you an see investment it. for the fight pit that we don't have the money to maintain anymore. <sighs> you know, I have a gambling problem, but at least I don't put two hundred uh, two hundred gold on on investments. You lent well, me two hundred gold a month ago. <laughs> you know, uh, so what will happen if you don't prosper. pay, I don't know if that's Mr. True, Malone? <sighs> Maloon's a hero. He's not, he's not, it's not like he's the Zentarum. He's not going to kill me for it, but he's also a very strong 
experienced adventurer who can probably at Tell least us. I mean yes if you want to get technical when do you, when do you have to pay him I told him I told him I'd have his money by the end of the week Ugh. there's no way we'll get another fight by then well we better do something to find some money you better do something to find some money Oz I'm working on it I have contacts that I've been with lately and uh, just... as you uh, as you're sort of sputtering Oz a, a woman um, the the barmaid with the green um, sort of apron uh, kind of has a white collar on it has sort of reddish blonde hair uh, and green eyes sort of sidles up to the table and uh, and sort of uh, looks at um, starts with let me see I know here starts with Mel uh, and and yeah looks at Mel and says uh, well, are you enjoying your uh, end of your shift, sugar? Well, I was until a few minutes ago, Bonnie. Now I'm not so sure. Oh, well, I'm sorry to hear that now. Well, uh, can I get anything for you all? Well, Bonnie, do you need any more help? We need a way to make a little bit of money. Oh, you know, you'll have to take that up with Dern, and I think he's we're all flush up taking you to cover some of the earlier shifts. I I I don't want to talk to Dernan. Oz, maybe you should talk to Dernan. I am not a barman. I am a patron. Speaking of it, can I get a bottle of my hey. regular? Hey, no more for him. All right. I'm Cut sick of off. paying off his tab at the end of the week. I'll pay yeah. it. I have I I have a steer. All you own is that one silver. Dernan knows I'm good for it. Uh, she sort of she sort of looks over at um, looks over at Beatrice and Redbeard and and says, uh, "Now anything for you all?" No, I can't think of anything at the moment. I'm still uh, working on this one. Hey, um, you know how I've been having you taste test my um, my honey wine? Yes. What it what did it make you um, say? Maybe. Uh, Vomit profusely. Did it make me vomit profusely? Well, um, no, I can't say as it did. It certainly has a way to go. Now it's uh, it's got you got some work to do on it, but uh, well, I might not look, but I have a bit of a sturdier constitution than you might expect. Uh, yeah, I had a sailor come to my uh, stand today, and apparently, uh turned his something his, his stomach something awful which well, is now, that can happen it, although there's no telling that maybe he didn't catch something in some far off jungle or port somewhere you never know with those types i gotta tell you, you gotta watch your back i'll have to keep that in mind well um that sounds like you all have some things to sort out i'll i'll check back on you in a minute uh, and she bon sort of bonnie uh, bonnie would you ask yes. dernan if he wants me to open up in the morning please? sure i'll check on that for you now Thank uh, you. and she sort of sidles off to uh sidles off to uh to to, to, to take care of her other patrons uh mm -hmm. and long about the time that this happens long about the time she walks away from the table um you hear so the sounds of the of the um tavern you're you're hearing you know drunken adventurer singing body sounds there's the off-key strumming of a young bard a few tables over uh and then all of the noise is eclipsed by a shout uh you hear some some person shout you pig you like killing me mates do you uh, and then as you all turn and look at the sound, you see a seven foot tall half orc woman is hit right in the face by a wild swinging punch from a male human whose shaved head is covered in eye shaped tattoos. Uh, standing around the half orc woman are four other <coughs> humans. Uh, dress they're all dressed similarly in kind of dark um, leather clothes and cloaks uh, and re seemingly ready to jump into the fray. The half orc woman staggers back, cracks her neck. Ugh, cracks her knuckles and then uh, leaps at the tattooed figure. But before you can see if blood is drawn, uh, a crowd of uh, spectators uh, get up from their tables and all sort of cluster around the brawl. Uh, what would you like to do? Arlo, Arlo, go take bets. That's, that's right. So I get up and I go towards them and be like, "Who's who has their money on the human? 
Yeah, and those of you who have selected uh, everyone, so just to, to, to let chat know, part of this adventure, everyone has selected an individual or two in the tavern that they know uh, and have sort of a friendly relationship they're acquaintances with. Uh, any of you who chose Yagra Stonefist as your friendly acquaintance in the bar, uh, it is Yagra Stonefist who is being attacked by the humans. Gray that may or may not up. change your uh, situation here. Gray is going to pipe up and holler, Hey, Dernan, code yellow over by the door. Yeah, uh, Dernan sort of looks and says, uh, Oh, Yagra's getting into it again, huh? Well, listen. Uh, she'll be all right. I got a silver piece that there's going to be two broken bones. I got a silver piece that could be going towards a drink, please. Uh, Bonnie, if you don't mind. <laughs> Do I have to uh do I have to roll to see if anyone would would want to bet? Um yeah, sure. Make a persuasion check for me. To see if you can persuade anyone to take a bet. And Mel is going to surreptitiously ease away from the table and begin to scope the abandoned tables where nobody might be to see if there's if anybody left any food or money lying on the tables. Gotcha. Okay. With an eight Arlo, um, unfortunately, everyone is just too distracted uh, as they've oh. kind of gathered around. And for the second time in the evening, as fisticuffs are raised, uh, we see a crowd of spectators like shouting and. I'm going to. I still have my inspiration. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna try again. <laughs> okay, yeah, go ahead and uh, go ahead and use your inspiration. Uh, incidentally, if anyone didn't have inspiration to begin with, uh, you'll be starting with inspiration because that was all fabulous. Okay, with a 16, uh, yes, you are able to find someone who's willing to bet. Um, so we'll just call it even odds. Um, who are you betting on to win, and how much are you betting? I am betting on Yarga, Yarga okay. to win. Okay. And let me see how much do I have. Mom, big spender. I'm going to put 10 gold into it. Okay. <clears throat> okay. All righty. So um, is anyone getting involved in the fight? You don't have to, and I'm not trying to convince you to, but I have different things are going to go different ways depending on if you get involved or not. As I, as I yell at Beast and said, get involved and help Yagra. Yar uh. Yagra. Yagra. And, uh, uh, and, uh, of course, uh, Beast is Bill. Bill, Bill, Bill Bill's gonna Bill's gonna jump up from the table, and uh, he's going to he's gonna snatch up a tankard uh, that has been recently left unattended due to the commotion, and he's gonna he's gonna go up behind the other guy and try to smash him over the head with the tankard. Okay, all right. Um, so yeah, go ahead and make a stealth check for me. Okay. We'll call it, uh, okay, 16 will do. Yeah, we'll call it a DC 10 because everyone's distracted by the loud noises. Um, so you sneak up behind the guy and then make um, make a an improvised we weapon check. We'll say that you're not proficient in this. Uh, we use, so you just use your flat strength mod and we'll give you a D4 plus your strength on it. Okay, so that's... to. <laughs> <laughs> so Bill uh, sneakily like with his tankard <laughs> walks up behind this thug and then right at the last second uh, we see a uh, and as the fight is kind of raging around uh, we see a table sort of near the fight where there is a uh, there's an elven man with sort of long uh, flowing blonde hair and kind of a nice blue uh, doublet shirt. Uh, and as the fight is kind of edging closer to his table, he pushes his chair back to stand up uh, and to get away from the fray and pushes it right uh, in front of Bill's foot, who trips over it and falls flat on his face, spilling whatever was in this tankard onto the ground and uh, very distinctly failing to hit the thug uh, in the face. And I think uh, as Bill hits the ground, we uh, we look up and we see Yagra, seven feet tall, uh, quite a bit taller than any of the men attacking her. And she rears back and 
punches uh, the initial attacker in the, just catches him, clocks him right in the temple, and he goes down hard, falls completely down. Uh, and then uh, before Bill can get up and join the fray, the rest of the men just swarm over Yagra, uh, pummeling her, uh, and a few b brief moments of blows are exchanged uh, before it seems that Yagra uh, does end up falling unconscious, uh, and the men grab their friend uh, and begin to race out the bar. Uh, Dernan, uh, grabs a, um, grabs an empty bottle from a, a sort of receptacle near, uh, the back of the bar and just, like, hucks it at them as they go out the door and says, and don't come back! Uh, and it sort of, like, shatters on one of the guys, uh, who stumbles out into the street. Bill is gonna uh, go. so Arlo, unfortunately, uh, Yagra loses the fight, so he I lost a, 10 gold on that one. <laughs> Bill's gonna go uh, after he gets up to his feet. Gonna try to pull Yagra to her feet. Uh, Come on. Yeah, I, I help. Come out. On, so as Yagra. you go over towards Yagra, we are gonna go over here. Um, okay. So I am gonna go ahead and pop over to the maps, folks. Um, all right. So this is the yawning portal. Um, and let's see. Bloop, bloop. Oh, Yagra is right there. Okay. Um, don't need any of you guys. Goodbye. Okay, so uh, Bill has gone over to Yagra Stone Fist uh, to I attempt to pull well. her to her feet. Uh, you said Arlo will do that as well? Yeah. Okay, what about anyone else? Well, did Mel find anything of interest in any abandoned uh, tables while people weren't paying attention? Yes, thank you. I... Uh, Forgot about that. Um, so please make an investigation check for me, Mel. No. Um, sorry. Oh, I don't see it. Okay. Did you see it? Because I don't see it. No, it chat. didn't roll. I don't know. Try clicking okay, it try again. again. Oh, that rolled. Okay. Investigation 11. Yeah, I mean, you find some discarded... Uh, you find some discarded uh, glasses and um, some half-eaten food hanging around um, in several places. Well, Mel looks at it, and if there's anything simple that's food, she's going to pilfer like a half a sandwich or something, but no Rubens. <laughs> Nothing with sauerkraut on it. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, so uh, I think there's like there's a... a dis uh oh, I realized that I chat. forgot to put everyone in the right place here. Um, I will need to fix that on our first break, which we will take uh, here in just a few minutes, I think. Um, okay, so, uh, yeah, so um, Mel has managed to find, uh, let's say you find them on this table over here, you find uh, a sandwich, something like a half-eaten ham and Swiss and something to drink. Uh, Oz, Redbeard, and Beatrice, um, where would you like to go? Oz starts towards, uh, Yagra and then notices across the pit, uh, at the table next to it, uh, the figure of Maloon Wardragon and, yes, uh, does a 180 and just books it for the bar pretty much. Okay. Hey, Oz, uh, is, is that Maloon over there? Yeah, the blonde one. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's a uh, he's a big fella. Oh yeah, he's he's a real big dude. That one. Yeah. How much gold did you say you owed him? Uh, about two 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 hundred. Two hundred gold. Yes, ish. Yeah, that's a lot Go of money. Up. Yeah, yeah, it is. Redbeard's gonna walk up to Meldoon. Okay. Um. Okay, so where Redbeard is headed towards Maloon. Uh, and unfortunately for Redbeard, before you get there, um, uh -huh. chaos erupts once again in the bar, as just behind you, between you and Yagra, uh, crawling out of the pit, you hear a roar as a, uh, a massive and hairy creature uh, with green skin and long, lanky hair, about eight feet tall, cocoon, cocoon, hands climb over the uh, over the edge of the pit and it launches itself up into it and you can see attached to it are these uh kind of massive like f almost 
giant mosquito looking creatures, but like fleshy. And uh, the the ones that are attached to it, they've got what appear to be like probisci, like stuck into the flesh of the troll. Uh, and they, uh, the ones attached to it have these full and bloated bellies as, as several more sort of fly up with a buzz and a screech. Uh, I need everyone to please roll initiative for me. Oh, not today. Okay. They didn't do it again. It's just one of them nights. Okay. All right. The, uh, the, fir the first roll uh, from us was me, and the second one was uh, was Beatrice. Okay, and I need I'm not sure to... which. Uh, I think it was under my name. Oh, I did well. Okay, all righty. So I've got, you said, okay, I got to go look at these. Uh, Redbeard had a nine, and nine was yourself, and the other was Beatrice? Correct. Which was the 20... Of course, you guys don't have... Well, no, 23 would have been with her mod, right? So, uh, Beatrice... And... Oh, okay. So I guess she's going 19 on the dice. Uh, and then I also need to add one for Dernan, who is definitely going to get involved with this nonsense. Uh, let me get back to him. Um... Why? Where? Where? There he is. Okay. Loop, loop. Are we okay. able to? So I, uh, I know that in our home game we can use our reaction to speak. Is uh, is yeah. that a rule with this game or? Um. Yeah. If you. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Kent. In the we're gonna fix it here in a second. I think I'm gonna throw to a break real quick before we start this fight. But also, Redbeard. Yes. Uh. If you actually, okay. I'll just let you speak as a free action if you want to shout something. Uh. Yeah. As soon as Redbeard wheels around and sees what's coming out of the goal, he goes. Darn it, it's a code black, code black on the east side of the bar. Uh, yeah, and as you shout that, um, you see Dernan uh, whips up his head and looks at the, uh, looks at the, um, what's happening and goes like, oh, not again. Uh, and he leaps over the bar and uh, grabs his sword and dashes around. Uh, as close as he can get to the situation uh, where we will begin his initiative. Bloop. Uh, okay, so uh, real quick, folks, we're going to take a very quick, like, two or three minute break while I fix the whole issue with our overlay here. Sorry about that. Uh, Zoom is weird, and I forgot to fix this um, before we went live. So we're going to take a quick break. Uh, there will be a short song um, that will play. If you will stick around, we will be right back. I don't a tale of glory rents us unto sacrifice and battles lost. Our heroes know not what awaits them and still they carry on.
And Okay, folks, sorry about that. We are back. Uh, I believe everyone should be in their right place. Uh, for those of you who are sticking around, despite the uh, the craziness, uh, I salute you. You are all champions. Um, so thank you very much for your attention and your grace with us as we uh, deal with the technology, which we all know can be a giant pain in the butt sometimes. So, okay. Hey, everybody. We have rolled initiative as this troll and a bunch of Sturges have, have crawled their way out of the yawning portal. Um, we are the champions. Well, we'll see who's the champions when all is said and done here. Uh, okay, so as uh, all of this begins to unleash here in the tavern and the patrons all begin to uh, to run in fear from everything that is happening, uh, as he leaps over the bar um, with an exclamation, Dernan yells as he dashes through the room. He says, uh, leave the troll to me. You guys take care of the extras. Uh, so he shouts that as Beatrice it is your turn. Okay. So Beatrice is going to draw her weapons, which I think is two short swords. If I'm not mistaken. Two. I have two of those or just one. I guess I'm um. still in I think if you wanted to, when you could pick uh, starting gear, I think two short swords is an option. So uh, the only difference is, and I can edit this on your sheet for you, uh, if you have two, is that um, when you roll damage with the second one, you don't add your um, modifier to the damage. So let me uh, fix that. If you want to go ahead and move your character while I'm doing this, and uh, I will... Uh, Oops, you are proficient damage 1d6 plus nothing um splashing damage okay oh yes 1d6 Oop. okay and i'll just drag this around for you so they're next okay there you go so uh beatrice your sheet is fixed um if you will yeah go ahead and you can move yourself um and yeah any... I have moved. Okay. I'm going to ready an attack for when one or more of these things comes up. Okay. From this ledge here, and um, um, my attack is I'm going to stabby stabby at him. Okay, excellent. Um, great. So Beatrice, you rush up and ready. You're hot on Dernan's heels, uh, and then uh, we get to Dernan. So Dernan is going to duck right in next to Redbeard. He's going to kind of put one foot up onto the uh, onto the side of the pit as he slashes past Redbeard. Uh, Dernan, whoo-wee! Dernan has a lot going on here, folks. Um, so he takes the massive um, greatsword off of the back wall behind the bar as, before he leaped across it, uh, and he makes actually four attacks on the troll. So... Mm, 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 mm. So we've got our four attacks. I need to check the troll's AC. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, 15. So one, two. Two of his attacks are successful as he cleaves into the troll, uh, dealing, uh, looks like, 15 damage to the troll. So, okay. Uh, and then, of course, it is the troll's turn. Uh, you see he slashes into the troll uh, several times. However... It does seem uh, as the as the cuts and the brackish troll blood are spilt across the uh, across the uh, the wood of the floor. Uh, you look back to the troll, and some of the wounds close up, despite uh, Dernan's savage attack. As the troll howls in fury and turns to Dernan, uh, it makes let's see three attacks on Dernan. Okay, uh, Dernan's AC over here. Ba -ba bam. Okay, so only one of which is successful. Dernan, underneath of his, uh, as as the claws slash and it tries to bite into Dernan, you can see that underneath of his simple tavern clothes, he appears to be wearing a uh, a set of finely crafted elven chainmail, a uh, chain shirt that turns the blade, uh, the bite, and the claws. However, one does manage to. Uh, 
draw blood off of his arm uh, for eight damage on Durnan. And then uh, Mel, it is your turn. Okay, well, Mel spins around the minute she hears that excitement, and without even thinking about it, she hurls a ray of frost. She reaches out a finger and points straight at the uh, the thing, whatever that hideous thing is, that is the closest to her, and she hurls okay. off a ray of frost at it. Okay, so, yeah, this one here. Okay, uh, yeah, go ahead and roll your attack. Well, now that didn't... Oh. Okay, there, there we, go. we go. All right, with a nine, unfortunately, uh, that will not be successful. Um, she realizes when it doesn't hit that the finger she was holding out towards the thing is clutching her half a ham and cheese sandwich, and perhaps <laughs> that affected what happened. Nice. I love it. Um, she okay. uh, shoves the sandwich in her mouth. She doesn't drop it. Yeah. I th okay. Yeah. So she flings her <laughs> flings her hand out, and like a piece of lettuce goes like <laughs> as the as the ray of frost like smashes into uh, the the like side of the well, and like crystals of ice fall down into the darkness below. And she looks at the sandwich, shoves it in her mouth to have her both hands free to uh, to to make the next attack. Um, any movement from Mel? No, she stays right where stays she right is. Stays right where she is. Okay. Oz, and uh, you had gone over to the bar. Uh, so Durnan, as you uh, made your way over to the bar, leaped past you with the greatsword uh, a few seconds ago. Uh, Oz, look, first, uh, just real quick, takes a look at the bar to see if there's any unattended, like, bottles. Maybe he was pouring a drink. Wow. Um, yeah, there are definitely unattended bottles on the bar. Oh, um, buddy. Yeah. Oz Problem. thinks for a, for what for him feels like mm -hmm. a long second, and I was like, I shouldn't. Uh, like Durnan's been good to me, and he takes off and leaps over. Uh, to can Oz move onto this? Like, can he do like a pirouette onto the actual ridge of the hole? Um, uh, yes, I will allow that. Uh, just to make sure that you don't try any too crazy acrobatics, that hole is hundreds of feet deep. So oh, just, yeah, no, Oz you know, is not going to, like, If do Oz anything. does anything crazy there, he, he going to die. <laughs> All right. Yeah, no, I, so, but, I yeah, I mean, like... I think you can, like, sort of, like, Dern and, like, put one foot halfway up on the wall and sort of brace yourself and... Yeah, I feel like during some of his, like, shows at the Yawning Tavern when he tries mm -hmm. to play for tips, he probably does a lot of stuff like walking along the edge of the hole and like like just stuff yeah. to get at people's attention. Yeah. Um so he's pretty comfortable and he's okay. going to uh stab at this little Okay thing. Yeah, let her rip. Uh da -da -da -da, rapier. That's only a 10. 10. Okay, yeah, so the ice, this thing is like flitting around and darting and the ice smashes past and, and tinkles down the wall and then uh, Oz leaps up and uh, attempts to stab it with the rapier and it's just like flitting around and is uh, too difficult to hit. Uh, uh, which bring, go, go ahead. Well, and Oz, as a bonus action, looks across the way at uh, Red, or er, er, at, at Gray, and uh, is, you've got this, and gives Gray bardic inspiration. Okay. Let's see. And gives finger guns. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. And so next up uh, is the Sturgis. So one Sturge that is directly next to um, Oz is going to attack. Uh, what is your AC? Oz's AC is a whopping 15. 15, okay. Uh, so that does not hit. It tries to uh, to bite you, and your uh, it's it's little proviscuits to get stuck in your leather armor, uh, and, and it pulls away. Um, let's see. We've got another one here coming at Beatrice. Uh, Beatrice, what is your AC? Um, I... Body. And I believe Beatrice had an action held for this, didn't she? Oh, she did. Yes, you're right. Thank you. Yep, sorry. It's a, it's a trigger. Well played, Beast. Thank you. Uh, well played, Beatrice. I hit the short sword button. Yes. Um, uh, I yes. think you click. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if it'll work down oh. there, but you can definitely click on these up here. Yeah, you want the ones that are up in your actions with the damage and stuff next to them? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, and you have two. Normally, you can't hold a bonus action, but I'm going to allow it. 
um, when it comes to duel up and fighting, because I think it's kind of crummy that just because, you know, that you wouldn't be able to have the bonus action. So uh, I'm definitely going to allow so that. you click on this one down here. Oh. On the, yeah. Uh, that's, that's yeah. Right. Yep. Okay. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and let you roll for both. The 11 does not hit. But the, that one that's does. does. Yeah. <laughs> let her rip. Oh my. First crit of the game. Oh, is that what the green means? Oh, I yeah. need a crit oh, yeah. sound. Uh, incidentally, if anyone can think of a uh, a good crit sound for a soundboard thing, uh, let me know. I'll try and come up with one. DM, what crit rules are we using? Uh, we are using standard D and D crit rules on this one. Okay. Yeah. So the game will roll. Roll twenty will yeah. roll it. Yes. Roll twenty. Yes, you're rolling. Roll you're rolling we'll damage for it twice. You're gonna click down here, actually. Oh. Rolling damage for it twice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when you if click, you, so if you go into you chat where it says oh, short sword oh. offhand and click, if you click it once, it'll just roll the crit damage for you. It'll do it all at once. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. Nope. Not Hunter's Mark. You want to go into the chat I, where it says. I, I. I did. Well, that's very odd. No, she just she clicked on the offhand thing in the chat. Huh. Wow, I, so I must have screwed something up on your macros somehow. I apologize for that. Uh, okay, but seven damage um, is definitely enough to slash this thing right out of the air. Uh, so this thing tries to... Um, no, stop that. This thing tries to to get purchase on on you, but uh, as well as Arlo, it's proboscis sticks in the leather armor, uh, and you take one swipe at it with your um, with your short sword and kind of knock it off, and then your other one just skewers it, and it sort of like tumbles back into the pit, like. Meh. Um, okay, and then uh, one of these. Let's see, you. Um, how fast are these things? Uh, they have 40 feet of fly. Okay, so let's see. One of these is coming for Arlo. Um, and how far can this one go? This one's, I think the only thing this one's got to do is come for Durnan, and the other one is coming back for Beatrice. So, okay, we're going to go clockwise here. says the crit noise should be toasty for Mortal Kombat. No, <laughs> toasty. I'm, I'm oh, it. that's it. Hell yeah. Yeah, I'll track that. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, VP. I'll track that audio down and we'll we'll put that on Toasty. my soundboard for next time. We can just do that one. Yeah. There you Toasty. go. Who needs a soundboard? Nice no, no, no. Well, here's what we do. Twenty. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right, all right, folks. So we got one Sturge coming at Beatrice here. Uh, pew. Okay, that is a sixteen to hit. I'm hearing noises from somewhere. That's Jacob. Oh, okay. All right. I thought I had myself muted. That's my bad. Okay. <laughs> I'm messing with my soundboard. Oh, okay. I see. Uh, I live to serve. Thank you, VP. <laughs> and thank you, by the way, for taking the night off to come watch us. Uh, it means a lot. I know you typically got to, you know, do your thing and stream, but we are super happy to have you around, bud. Um, okay, so that does hit. So the Sturge uh, be hits you, Beatrice, for four piercing damage, and it actually uh, it sucks on and attaches to, your, to you <clears throat> and begins to suck out your blood. No. Uh, okay, one of these is coming at Durnan because he was the closest one. Uh, Kapu. Uh, that's not going to hit. That's an eight. And then one is coming for Arlo. Uh, Kapu. That is a nat one. So that definitely doesn't hit. And that brings us to Redbeard. Is there anyone I'm missing? Oh, Arlo. What was your initiative, dude? I think you guys were telling me that you needed to be added to the turn thing way earlier and I forgot about it. Yeah, it was a seven. It was a seven. Oh, good. We haven't that's missed perfect. you. Hell yes. I love it when a plan comes together. Okay, folks, uh, Redbeard, you're up. All righty. So um, <clears throat> Dernan instructed everyone to worry about the Sturgeons, but Redbeard is standing right the fuck next to that troll. So <laughs> instead of doing as he was instructed, he is going to, A, try to um, buy himself a second to get away, and B, try to create a little bit of counterplay for Dernan. So he's going to okay. go ahead and draw his rapier, Yep. And take a little slash at the uh, kind of towards like the Achilles tendon area on this troll. Okay. So we are throwing a rapier attack at the troll. All right, let her rip. <laughs> yeah. <Ooh>. Twenty. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Damn you. All right. Nice. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. So. And uh, because yeah, it, it is actually in uh, melee. 
with Durin, so I should be getting sneak attack on this as well. That is correct. So, yeah, so that's four from the sneak attack and ten from your rapier. So that is 14 damage all day. Pew! And then at that point, I'm actually going to use my bonus action to Mm -hmm. disengage. Okay. Whoop, that's not... Let's see. And I'm going to fade back to about here, and I'm going to holler at Durnan and say, stay on him. And I'm going to get ready to draw my bow in the next round. Yeah, nice. Okay. Uh, All right, so that brings us to Bill. You're up. Uh, Bill Bill promptly drops uh, whatever portion of Yagra's body he had in his (laughs) hands to thunk down onto the, the wooden planks as he 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 reaches out behind him and he picks up this sledgehammer that he always keeps nearby his his signature weapon and he you can hear him scream going and hey, nobody laughed at my jokes and so bill <laughs> bill is going to rage and he is going to go right up to this troll and a attempts to slap it with a sledgehammer <laughs> okay all right that'll hit 24 looks good and we got 15, 15. okay yeah so you rush up and start attack i need to see if this thing has any um yeah i'm not gonna do that no it does not have any damage resistances okay all righty so yeah bill races up and starts sl- and smack slams his hammer into the side of the troll and you hear it like a rib crack uh and then arlo it is your turn you have been attacked by the sturge directly in front of you uh before he fully lets go i'm going to like try to catch the other the like the head part of yagra would i have to oh roll sorry. for that or I... uh hang on just a moment because I took away all the zoom. Okay, we're back, I hope, ladies and gentlemen. No, uh-oh. Stand by. I have somehow managed to completely mess up our overlay, and everyone is gone. I don't like that. That's not great. Um, okay. Okay, yeah. Um, I'm sorry. Keep keep talking to me. So I wanted to move her to one of the, the booths, so she'll be able to rest there, and then I'll go... Uh, That'd be a would that be an action? You want to take her to a booth? Uh, yes, that will take your yeah. whole action if you want to drag her uh, somewhere else. That, that's fine. I'll go ahead and do that. Sorry for the weird stuff that's happening here, folks, but I am trying to get our zooms back. I minimized it like an idiot somehow. Uh, okay, yeah, so you can drag Yagra away. Uh, the, the Sturge will get an attack of opportunity on you as you go. Um, so I will have it take that. Pew, pew. Uh, that is only an 11 to hit. What is your AC, Arlo? My AC is a 14. Okay, so 11 does not hit. There we go. Okay, uh, so you move uh, Yagra over to the table and yeah. drag her, and that takes your action. Uh, you still have a bonus action if you have anything you can or would like to do with that. Uh... I'll go ahead and I already moved 10. No, no, I'll go ahead and I'll just stay there. Okay, just stay there. All right. Quick question between turns. What is the mouse command for measuring things in roll 20? Uh, there are two ways to do it. One, if you go to the left box where the um, all the buttons are, uh, uh-huh. you can click the one. It's like a circle with a comb in it, It's uh, and that's the ruler tool, and that you can just measure whatever you want. Uh, If you have the select tool selected and you pick up a token and then you right click while you still have it picked up, uh, you can anywhere you move it around, it will show you the distance. And then if you right click again, it will put down a waypoint. Okay, got it. Yeah. Um, Okay, now uh, I'm still working on cams. This is the last one. Everyone's back. Sorry about that, chat. Um, the technology is, is still kicking my ass, but it's cool. Thank you guys. Sorry, everybody. I we appreciate never it. Left you. Uh, yeah. We all right. Now that was all. Arlo's uh, turn well, well, and it bring, uh, you uh, didn't have it. Uh, sorry. You asked me, um, I was on your bonus action. Did you have anything you wanted to do? Uh, Arlo? 
Mm, honestly, if I got an uh, if I got attacked, I can use hellish uh, rebook. Ah, yes, that's correct. Okay, so I, but I, it, I think it actually has to hit you. Uh, let me look at Hellish Rebuke real quick. It does have to hit you and deal damage, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, then that, that's okay. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, also, that's your that's reaction. Uh, I think the only thing you can do with the bonus action is hex, and you don't have to do that. Um, no. Okay, you're not going to hex. Cool, cool. Uh, so, Beatrice, we're back to you. E, I have a thing on me. Right? Yes. 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 Uh, no, you killed the thing. Oh, you do have a thing on you. Yes, one attack you, you killed it, you have another one on you. I'm, I want to get it off. Okay. Probably kind of panicked, like, nah! Okay. Um, mechanically speaking, we can flavor that narratively however we want. The best way to do that is just to attack it. Um, oh. It doesn't, like, have you grappled or anything, so you can just attack it, and we'll flavor it as you pulling it off and okay. killing it, should you do so. So. Well, let's see if I can... Stab it skewer with skewer it on your short sword and shake it off into the hole. Shake it off. <laughs> Come on Let's and shake it back. off. Shake it shake off, baby, baby for, me. for me. Come on and take me like, off. Take me off. It's like stuck to my chest. Singing two different shake it off. There's there. a sturge on my chest. Okay. Anyway. All right. Um, All right. So we'll use this. And that's good. Twenty-four hits. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. And does it, is it going to work now if I do the thing? Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, seven piercing damage. Yeah, that is enough. Uh, once again, this one latches onto you where the other one was not successful. Uh, nevertheless, you are able to uh, bat it off of yourself and stab it. Uh, and, th you know, and it is thrown like into the pit. <laughs> Actually, I think this one you throw and it lands like right on the edge of the, uh, of the wooden platform extending over the pit with the sad little pfft. Uh, okay, any movement, and you still have a bonus action. Um, let's see here. Uh, this probably move to. Oh, I think I saw. Thanks for the follow, whoever that was. Hard to call that stuff out while we're doing this but i appreciate all of you who have stopped by and followed us we love you and pull out my bow okay um so you do need to if you attacked with your short sword which you did uh you can't switch your bonus action to the uh, to the bow uh, oh. The only reason you can do uh, two attacks with the short swords is because you uh, um, two with two weapon fighting. If you attack with a light weapon in your main hand, you can attack with a light weapon in your off hand as a bonus action. Um, but at level two, you still only have one attack. So. Well, then I will prepare. Okay. To... Okay. Yeah, that's fair. All of that. Um, like. Yeah, so, and just to make a, a ruling clear, again, this is not exactly rules as written, folks, but um, I'm going to basically call that um, as you can't really, normally you can't prepare bonus actions. I am going to allow folks to prepare melee attacks that they could make with their bonus action and basically nothing else as a prepared action. So just a blanket rule there, because I just don't like the idea of taking attacks away from characters. Um, I think you only have a limited amount of cool stuff you can do on a turn, and I want to make sure you can do it. But stuff like I want to prepare a bonus action spell or stuff like that, um, I'm not really going to allow just just the melee attacks, if that's fair. Okay, uh, which brings us to Durnan. So Durnan uh, has taken a hit from this thing and grunts uh, and says, You come into my bar attacking my patrons! Uh, and he makes his four attacks. Uh, that's a 27, a 10, a 24, and a 9. So uh, he deals 13, and 7 is 20 points of slashing damage to the troll. Um, God, please stop giving me those notifications. i got to figure out how to turn that off. Okay, so he deals uh, 20 points of damage to the troll as he slashes into it. Once again, the troll um, once more is shrieking, and it still has these bloated flies like attached into it. Um, how much HP does this guy even have left? Oh, he's okay. All right, fair enough. Uh, and that brings us to the troll. Now, the troll, uh, 
take regains 10 hit points from its regeneration as you see some of the wounds you have inflicted nope i want to do that thank you some of the wounds you've inflicted begin to close but you are it seems damaging it faster than its regeneration so some of them are not quite knitting themselves back together uh, as the thing shrieks uh, and is going to make uh, two attacks on Durnan and one attack on bill so it's going to go to uh, it's going to try to bite bill uh, so, Bill, you smash it in the back with a hammer, and it whips its head around and turns and tries to bite you. Uh, I only have an 11 to hit. Good God, it guys. I can't hit. roll for crap tonight. This is dire. Um, okay. And then it turns around and takes two claw attacks at Durnan. One, two. I've got a 9 and a 19. The 19 hits for 16 slashing damage as Durnan takes a solid score across the chest. Um uh, okay, and Mel, you are up. Mel steps up to where she can have a straight shot. Oh. And she is going to, uh, having blown the crumbs off of her right hand, she sticks her fingers out and she wiggles and, and maneuvers her the five fingers on her on her uh, right hand, and she shoots off magic missiles at the Sturge closest to Oz, the Sturge closest to Durnan, and the Sturge closest to um, Arlo. Okay. So now, do I? Uh, you roll uh, D4s. Is, so it is going to be three D4s plus one. So who is the first one you named? Kent, there will be a bond. Next the one that is The one that is closest to um, Oz. Okay. Uh, yeah, so go ahead and roll a D4 plus one for that one. Okay, uh, you should so just if be I able hit the magic the, muscle yeah. button, does it do it, it or do I need indeed. to roll the dice individually? Nope, you can just hit the button. Hang on, folks. Okay. I and then hit it two more times for the other dice, right? Okay, and then now I'm hitting the one that's closest to Durnan. Hang on, folks. Okay. And now I'm hitting the one closest to Arlo. Okay, um, that'll do. Okay. Okay, sorry, folks. Uh, all right, so the first one um, next to, you said, Oz? Yes. Okay, uh, five damage is enough to kill that one. So you uh, fire your magic missile. What is, uh, I may have missed this, what does um, Mel's magic missile look like? Well, she wiggled her fingers, and it came out in front of, of her fingers and dashed off toward it. And it's so fast at this point, it's a little hard to see. Uh, it, there was a streak of light something, and it just took him out. Okay. Okay. Cool deal. Uh, and then who was the next one? The next one was Dernan, and that one was a little bit more visible. Okay, as she's as she's learning to do what she, she's pulled them off, and it actually had a metallic gleam to it. Okay. Alrighty, uh, that one also two actually these things do not have a lot of hit point. Two is is sufficient to uh, destroy those things, uh, and then the final one was which one? Was that one? And that third okay. magic missile, honest to goodness, looked like a ball bearing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, interesting. Okay, so you hit that one, and that one is thrown onto the table nearby um, as it plops down next to Bill, who probably doesn't notice because he's so, so mad. Okay, and having done all that and seeing it happen, Mel is delighted with herself that she uh, crouches down. She doesn't, like, go prone, but she crouches down next to the, to the edge of the wooden guardrail around the pit to get maybe get a little cover. She's thinking. Okay. Uh, also, to the folks in chat, I do apologize. For some reason, I forgot to add the Ages of Einar YouTube channel to uh, the socials links. Uh, I believe Vincent Page has it correct there. Uh, I will get that added the next chance that I get um, when we're out of game. So that'll be free. For, that'll be there for next time. And we will be uploading um, the videos to that once uh, once we get done. Um, I think on this one, I'm going to have to wait until I can re-download the video from Twitch because I forgot to hit the record button before I hit the go live button because, you know, it's our first episode and I'm all over the place tonight. But uh, we will get that up for you guys. I can download it from Twitch once it processes. So we will go Pixel, from there. I'm recording it on Zoom. 
Okay. All right, that's cool, because so we'll at least have that. Um, all right. Ba -ba -ba -ba. So that's Mel, um, and Oz, you're next. So Oz, you were standing there trying to swipe at the thing, and then it was blasted right out from under you by a, a curious bl uh, burst of energy, uh, and then you were up. I appreciate the assist, and Oz uh, takes off along the rail. Uh, oh, oh, no. Oh, no, uh, yeah, no, uh, no, no, no. Oz takes off, and let me just mark out the path here. Uh, yeah, if you, I think you can right click to add, yeah, waypoints. There yeah. you go. Yeah, uh, Oz is going to sprint full dash action to get behind Bill, and then say, "You should stand over there," uh, and point to like this square right here. He's like, "I've got okay. an idea." Uh, and that's all. Oh wait, and uh, he's going to give. Bill Bardic inspiration. Okay. So he pats him on the shoulder. He's like, "You've got this." <laughs> okay. All righty, and that brings us to the Sturges. Uh, so uh, the Sturges that are full, they all sort of flit off of um, the uh, the troll and start to go down into the pit, uh, and they vanish. Uh, because they are full and they don't need anything else. Uh, and then uh, as a reaction, Dernan is going to yell, Oh, great! We oh, no, Sorry, that's not the right action. He goes, Great! We don't with the uh, with the extras. Uh, somebody throw some lamp oil on this son of a bitch. Um, and then uh, that brings us to Redbeard. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Redbeard was already kind of in the process of drawing his bow, so rather than get, doing anything about lamp oil... He is just going to draw his bow, and since the troll is still in melee with Durlin, Durnan, he is going to take a shot and hope to hit with sneak attack damage. Okay, yeah, let it rip. There it goes. Oh. Okay, so with an 11, that is not going to hit. I would like to burn my inspiration to okay. uh, roll that again. Yeah, go for it. Burn that inspiration. Hey. Yes. 17 hits. So then we are going to throw that damage. Okay, for nine points of damage. Nice. Okay, yeah. So you, uh, is it a, is it, it's a short bow is what it is? Yeah. It is yes. a short bow, yeah. yes. So you, I you did, did it add my modifier to that? Um, Yes, you rolled a two plus four, and then you rolled three on the sneak attack. So okay, yep, cool. all good. Okay, yeah. So you uh, fire off your short bow for nine points of damage, uh, hitting a particular vulnerable spot of the. I think as it's like swiping at Dern, and you catch it under the ribs, and like thunk the arrow hits in. Um, maybe as it turned back around, it's the same side where Bill smashed it with the hammer. Uh, so it's like softened up, and the rib is cracked, and then the arrow punches in, and the thing howls in anguish. Uh, any movement from uh, Red? Nope. Okay. Uh, right Bill, there. you're up. All right, Bill is going to employ a little bit of that footwork that he he uses so often in the in the in the boxing ring, and he's going to kind of dance a little bit around the side of this pillar, maintaining melee contact with this vicious troll that just tried to bite him. Okay. And He's going to he's going to raise up his hammer and he's going to scream and nobody complimented my new shirt. And he's going to he's going to reckless attack okay. uh, the troll with his maul. Excellent. Let her rip. Oh, okay. oh, no. 14. 14 Rest. still doesn't hit, though. Oh, oh. Uh, well, 15 is the AC to beat here. Well, B Bill's feeling particularly inspired today. OK. Well, no, you already, but the thing is, you already oh, had advantage for the reckless. Yeah. yeah, so well, you, you can't have bardic actually. Bardic Inspiration. You do oh, have you do Bardic, bardic inspiration, inspiration if you'd like to burn that. Yeah, sorry, guys. Okay. Uh, how Thank do you, I uh, Oz. use that? So just roll a d6. Yeah. If you look over on the left side, there's a little d20. Roll a d6. Roll a d6. Uh, and, there's, and from there, you can just click the dice that you want to roll. Yeah. There's a d20 on the left side, you uh, say. Uh, underneath the ruler the, that we the used. the toolbar there on the left-hand oh, side. Oh, completely yeah, like the different second place. to last or the last thing over there. 
All right. D6, four. four. Okay, so uh, an 18 does hit. Go ahead and roll that damage. Oh, 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 oh. Here we go. All right. That's nine points. All right. Um, yeah, so that is nine points of damage as uh, Bill's um, fashion-related rage <laughs> is uh, is smote out upon this uh, unlucky troll. Uh, and then Arlo, you're up. Okay, so I'll go ahead and get behind the troll. Okay. And I'll go ahead and cast the Eldritch Blast. Okay, I will say, uh, mechanically speaking, because Eldritch Blast is a, a ranged attack, uh, mm -hmm. when you're in melee with a creature, uh, you have disadvantage on that, so you probably want to stop before you get into melee with the thing. Well, oh, then that's fine. I'll go ahead and use my dagger. Okay. Yeah, that's all good. Just, yeah, for, for everyone's knowledge, if you are uh, attacking a creature with a ranged weapon uh, in melee in D&D 5th edition, unless you have certain feats, uh, you will have disadvantage on that. Yeah. Uh, Oz kind of shuts out. like, oh, no, as, as uh, Arlo gets in close, he had a plan, but this is okay. So, okay, go in for the dagger, please. Uh, 17 hits, roll damage. God, you guys are rolling pretty well tonight. And I'm rolling like garbage, except on Durnan. And everyone in chat can see that I am legit rolling garbage over here. Uh, no. Okay, so what you want to do, Arlo, in the chat, um, not on your character sheet, but in the chat, you want to go to where it says dagger oh, and click it, and yeah, it'll yeah. roll your damage over there. Yeah, five. Okay, nice. so um, you s sort of stab it across the back for an extra five points of piercing damage. Uh, as this thing is beginning to look quite wounded and sluggish, uh, Beatrice, you're up. Uh, hold, real quick, before Arlo's turn ends, uh, can Oz just real quick shout, like, take a step back and try to direct him to get right there so he's not right in... Uh, I, just, can use a, I can use my bonus action just to go on that Yeah, side well, yeah, know. before we get well, to your turn, still you still have movement, movement so yeah, you yeah, can step I just back don't want you to leave its uh, range so it can't take an attack of opportunity. So if you step oh, okay. right there, you'll still be in its melee. Right here? Yeah. Okay. I'll go ahead and do that, and I'll I'll go ahead and shout, with all these adventurers, we don't even have any help from anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Um, Are we really the only main characters in this <laughs> <bar? Jeez. laughs> We're the only ones doing all the work here. Okay, uh, and then Beatrice, you're up. Oh, and to be fair, uh, Dernan is putting in some work, but then again, it's his bar, so... To be fair. And he's the one who decided to make a bar in a hole where there's a pit full of monsters, so I guess he's used to this. I don't see anything resembling lamp oil in my Um bar. Yeah, so uh there probably would be I don't know that there's anything like on the map, but on the walls there probably would be like um Ooh, you know what? Am I near Um, you know, so yeah, there I would think lamp, around the, just around the, the walls, too. just in various different places, there are gonna be like some lamps and chandeliers and stuff. So uh, you know what? I'll... Counterpoint. Uh oh, all of my stuff moved again. Stand by, everyone. No. Boop. Some things. Boop. Did I fix it? I did. Hell yeah. Okay, we're cool. Continue. Okay. So, um. On this table, am I, if I do this, will it boop boop like you do? No? Okay. Uh, I don't know what you're trying to do. You, If you click There's, and hold, like it should to make the a... the north there. Like here? Uh, can I roll a perception? Yeah. Can I roll a perception to see if I see a particularly flammable alcohol? Um, yeah. Okay, go for it. All right. Let's pull the character sheet up again. We'll call it DC 10 as you're trying to notice this in the heat of battle in not a super well-lit room. Gotcha. All right. Give it a second. I clicked it. It's done. Eh, nope. A uh, six. Okay. Uh, yeah, so you kind of feverishly look around and you don't really see anything that fits the bill. Do any of the tables have lamps on them? Um... Yeah, I mean, I think that there would be, like, some, you know, little 
lamps um, because the candle wax gets messy, right? Um, and Dernan is certainly not hurting for money. So, yeah, I think he springs for, like, table lamps. He wouldn't have yelled, grab some table lamp lamp oil if there wasn't lamp oil there anywhere in the bar, you right know? Nearby, right. Okay, so I think he knows what's in his uh, he knows what's in his bar. What uh, what what B is gonna do here is she's gonna go to this table. Can she just pick up and chuck it at the thing? Um, the lamp oil. Yes. What you'll do is you will make a ranged attack without your proficiency, which is basically a, just a dexterity check. Dexterity so on the side where it says dexterity, not where it says saving throws, but just where your stats are, just click the word dexterity. And it should just roll a general dex check for you. Okay. Eight. With an eight. Aww. Okay. So I'm yeah, you throw <laughs> you throw it and it splashes and, and uh, it, it kind of splashes between them on the... Uh... I would like to use my inspiration. Use your inspo? Okay, yeah, go for it. Okay. 16. Yeah, 16 definitely will get it done for you. Um, so yeah, you throw the, the lamp oil on the, uh, on the target. Um... Let's put like a. I mean, it should be a lit lamp, really, right? Yeah. Like she didn't blow it out. Yeah. You, she... So you throw the lamp oil, oil <laughs> on the target, um, and we will bomb. say that a lamp does uh, to a troll one d six of fire damage, uh, which is four. So you do light the lamp on or light the troll on a little bit, and it seems to take quite offense to the fire, uh, and it shrieks and. Uh, and rages as it takes uh, takes the damage. Uh, and Dernan uh, <laughs> sees it catch on fire. Oh, any other movement or anything from Beatrice? Um, she's probably going to go wide-eyed when she notices it's much significantly more angry and like take a, a step closer to, gotcha. to Gray. <laughs> nice, nice. <I'm> okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so as, as he does... Dernan says, uh, thank you, excellent work. And uh, he pops out. Nice. Pops off his attacks. Uh, let's see. Three of those hit. So that is 16 plus 8 plus 8. So 30 32. some flashing damage. 30, 32. 32, 32, yeah. Oh. So that is definitely going to be all of the remaining hit points of the troll. Oh, so he swung, slash, and then he misses one, uh, slashes again, and then if for the final attack, just drives his sword up into the uh, the guts of the creature and out the back, lifts it up and just throws it off the edge <laughs> down into the pit. Ah, and it just, you don't even hear us, you don't even hear a poof. It's just, ah, you know, and, and you hear the roar of the creature as it just falls um, indefinitely down the pit. And that will take us out of initiative order. So as things begin to sort of calm down, everyone's breathing heavily. Darnan sort of looks around at the mess and sort of shakes his head and says, well, you fought well, everyone. Appreciate the assist. I had a whole, I was going to thunder wave it and knock it into the pit. And then I was going to say a cool one liner, like no shirt, no shoes, no service. <laughs> and uh, Dernan says, I'm sure that would have been very funny. Ozymandias. <laughs> Bill, Bill, you can hear Bill muttering to himself. Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> I, I look at Oz and, and, and I say, do you think he wants to go to the underground fighting rings with us? Dernan? Yes, Dernan. No, I don't think he does. <laughs> hey, hey, that's my payday. That's my payday. <laughs> okay. It wouldn't um, be fair to the other guy. I can't go doing stuff like that. Yeah, and so um, after uh, after the the encounter happens here, uh, what would you guys like to do? So Gray is going to kind of like just move on as if nothing really happened. Clearly he's seen something like this happen a few times before in this place. So he's just going to walk back over to, uh, to what is it, Maloon? Is the guy's name? Uh, yes, Maloon Warder. Okay, Haley, do you want to give me the mouse or walk me over there? Either one's fine. Why do we hang out here? <laughs> this happens like once a week. Why do we hang out here? Just rolls up to, to Maloon and, and does his best to do this like in full view of Oz who is standing kind of nearby there and says so uh Maloon was it uh yeah right so uh anyway I was on my way over here to say something to you when all of that when all of that happened uh, sort of, uh, takes it, it, I understand that you uh decided to invest in Oz's little business venture over there 
Well, you know, I mean, he I, came I, came to I, me begging for some money, and I had a little coin to spare, and thought, why not? Right, right, right. So I was, um, I was actually just a bit. He's doing quite well. I was actually just about to go pay him, but he informed me that he actually owes you some money. So uh, and he asked me to just give this to you. And go, uh, Gray will go ahead and just count out two hundred gold from his uh, his coin sack and just gives it to Maloon. Well, now when he told me earlier today, when I found him unconscious in a puddle outside of this very establishment, he said, oh, I've got a big payday coming. I thought to myself, you know, I've heard that tale before, but I tell you what, I, I appreciate it. I did not expect. He's an honest man, that one. Uh, well, you know, uh, I'm not sure I agree with you there, but uh, he sort of scoops the coins into his uh, into his bag and says, uh, "Nevertheless, uh, this will go quite a ways towards smoothing over our relationship." Uh, and so he sort I'm of like raises his this. raises his glass to Oz over there. Uh, Oz is trying his hardest to hide behind this pillar. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, which okay. which is being made terribly inconvenient by Bill muttering and poking him what was it again no skirt no boots <laughs> <laughs> nice nice um, no no bill i think he said no shirt no boots no service well that doesn't um, make any sense big blue come on yeah and i think you guys all uh, make your way back over to your usual table after the fight <clears throat> um someone comes and kind of is uh I think Bonnie probably comes over and is trying to help Yagra uh, get back on her feet as you guys make your way back over to your usual spot. And uh, shortly after you that guys down uh, sit down, hang on, I need to find my handouts for this. Ba -ba -ba. Um, where are my player handouts in the thing? I don't know. Um, I don't. Oh, there it is. Yeah, okay. So shortly after you guys uh, sit down on uh, at your usual table, um, you see a quite interesting fellow sort of push his way over out of the crowd. He's wearing sort of uh, big billowy sleeves and a scarf, and he has this funny hat on his head and this massive mustache that sort of comes out uh, from the sides of his face. Um as he says, uh, he, so he strokes his mustache, adjusts his floppy hat, sort of tightens his scarf, uh, and says, um, "You'll be adventurers, am I right? I could use your help. Let's uh, let's talk, shall we?" Oh, oh, hello, hello, hello! I hello. am Volo Tampkadarm at your service, chronicler, wizard, and celebrity. I trust you've noticed the violence in our fair city these past ten days. I haven't seen so much blood since my last visit to Baldur's Gate. But now I fear I have misplaced a friend amidst this odious malevolence. You see, my friend's name is Floon Blagmar. He's got more beauty than brains, you know, and I worry he took a bad way home a couple nights ago and was kidnapped or worse. If Wait, you what? agree to track him down with all due haste, I can offer you some money. I can offer you ten dragons apiece now. Uh, dragons are gold pieces. I can offer you ten dragons apiece now, or I can give you each ten times that when you find Floon. May I prevail upon you in my hour of need? Floon is missing? Yes, Floon is missing just the other night. Oh my, I was with Floon the other night. What? Oh no. Bill's oh, gonna please. slap Arlo and say... Is he even yeah, speaking common? Uh, yes, he's actually speaking common. The, well, and, and I Mel, don't know lean, Mel leans around whoever to where she can get a good look at this guy, and she says, I have never seen a mustache like that. Did you grow that or did you have to train it? He says, oh, what's this old thing? Oh, well, you know, a little of this, a little of that, a little wax, a little honey, a little... Uh, honey, you say? Yes, a little bit of honey. And you mix in the honey with the wax. It gives it a little extra, you know, the girls like it when they smell something nice. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I look at Bill and be like, I don't think he is speaking common. You're right. I would buy some of that. 
He says, well, listen, my mustache is flattery will get you everywhere, but my mustache aside, uh, a man is missing. <laughs> Oh. oh right, yeah. <laughs> the, the the man. The only one that's right. Missing. What was your friend doing last time you saw him? Well, you know, he's a bit of a. Honestly, I don't know where he comes by his money, but most days he sort of <sighs> spends them drinking and meeting people. He's a bit of a a he's layabout, a which I mean, I'm not always the most industrious myself, but I've written books, you know. It's a lot of work, all the research I do, and he sort of just. I don't know, he's always around, but you know, he's a good time. He's a regular <laughs> Ozymandias. And so the last time I saw him, we were out drinking, and uh, I went my way, and he went his way. Um, and, well, I, I haven't seen him in a couple of days. No one seems what, to have. What district were you in when he went missing? What district were you drinking in? Oh, we were not in this bar particularly, but we were here in the dock ward. In the dock ward, you say? Yes. Uh, Gray is going to scan his knowledge of the local area to see, like, where, like which direction he thinks this guy might have gone that would have taken him through a bad part of town. Um, yeah, every part of town is bad here. <laughs> you guys are still, yeah. But, uh, but, but he also does say, um, yes, well, I had the writer's block, you know, I'm working on another book. Uh, I just, of course, released, um, the, uh, Vo Volo's Guide to Everything, uh, of course, um. And, uh, well, uh, a lot of creatures, I was just in Chult doing research on the individuals down there, and I was working on another book um, about some, uh, some things a little closer to home. Uh, however, I've, I've hit a bit of a block, you know, and so I met him for drinks at the Skewered Dragon, see if I could shake something loose. Um, we sort of, you know, drank and, and gambled for a few hours, as we usually do, and then, uh, then I left, and that's the last I saw of Loon. So you left the bar before he did, and you didn't see which way he went. I did not, but I, the last place I saw him was the Skewered Dragon here in the in the dock ward. Do you happen to know where he lives? Uh, I don't know if I do know where he lives. Uh, um, no, I I'm not sure exactly where he lives. Uh, he always seems to be waking up in. Uh, he sort of like nudges uh, whoever's the closest to him. He says, "Always oh, seems to be waking up in someone else's bed every morning." You know what I'm saying? I, I look at him and I ask him, you said that you were you were betting or gambling. Where where exactly was that? Maybe we can get some information from that from that bar. Well, or... I told you it was the skewered dragon. It's just and he kind of gives you directions. Um I don't know if I have that on my map, actually. I know I where it's at. Do. I'll I'll get us there. It's fine. There's and been Bill? gambling there and you never told me, Oz? I've been, there's gambling in every bar. Arlo, it's water. Does Gray know anything particular about the skewer dragon? Again, tapping into the whole urchin thing. Uh, yeah, sure. Make a um, in history check, I guess, or an intelligence check, whichever. If you're not proficient, it's basically the same thing. So, and Bill, right, to no yeah, one it's in just, particular, it's just a flat intelligence roll. Okay. To no one in particular, Bill will say. Seriously, it's just it just whistles. I don't hear anything. Um. That looks uh, like a natural 20. That 20. Yeah, oh, all right. You um, you do know some things about the Skewered Dragon, Redbeard. Uh, the Skewered Dragon is a front for Zentarim activity. For what? Zentarim activity. Is that like the mob or something? The Zents, yeah. It's the, the Black Network, the... I'm sure the character would know. I, yes, I just, okay, I yes. Um, you, the, the, the Zentarim are in fact the... Are you, yes, as as a as a member of the organization you're a member of, you would be aware of the Zentarum. They are a mercenary company slash criminal band. They do have some legitimate endeavors, which always makes it difficult to just throw them out of town outright. But Money there wandering. also is like a side business that almost every chapter of the Zentarum do that is like drug smuggling and you know trading in illicit goods and you know, thievery and, like, mercenary work that's not strictly legal, uh, even though they are just, like, a mercenary force that, like, a lot of people use anyway uh, for, like, guards or for, you know, guarding caravans okay. or for even some, like, cities and states will have to hire them from time to so, time. Uh, so Gray looks at looks at uh, Volo Bear and says, all right, we'll help you find your friend, but I'm going to give you a Drake's worth of free advice. If you're going to meet somebody for drink, drinks, do not go to the Skewered Dragon. Unless you're looking for trouble. Oh, well, you know, uh, 
Okay, I suppose I've you know we haven't really had trouble there before, but well, I don't know. After all of this, maybe I ought to think about it. Uh, Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Did you say we were going to get ten dragons now, and how many when we find them? Uh, I said ten, ten dragons now, and half again as, or, and and I'm sorry, ten times that many when we when you find him. I just he needs to be brought home safe. Ten times that many each. Each, yes, of course. I'm, I am Volotam Kedarm. I've written books. You see, I'm sure you have heard of my guide to everything. It's selling quite well. Seriously, does anyone know what this guy's saying? <laughs> <laughs> I, I look at Bill and I said, "Hey, how about how about you go buy a round for the whole table?" And I give him the the gold, uh, two gold pieces. Oh, oh, sure, buddy. I'll buy a round for a gold. And Bill pockets one of them and walks off to the bar. Uh, Flume uh, Blackmar is one of Oz's allied contacts from yes. the time carousing. Would mm -hmm. Oz have maybe been there that night with Flume, maybe? Um, yeah, uh, I'm going to say no, but make an intelligence check for me. Oh, no. Oz is not very intelligent. Oh, no. He's kind of intelligent. Oh, oh, no, he's not. Oh, <laughs> damn. Um, uh, yeah, so... Use, hold on. I was just going to use his inspiration. I'm using my yeah. inspiration. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Oh, boy. That's a little better. Okay. Yeah, okay. Much so better. with a 14, um, you know that Floon sometimes uh, habits places he shouldn't. Um and uh, but you do know he has a number of other associates um and the something that occurs to you is that uh, he has another friend who looks very similar to him by the name of Rainier Neverember because you can't imagine why anyone would want to kidnap Floon, exactly. I mean, maybe he slept with the wrong nobleman's wife, but he's kind of a charming guy and usually can bullshit his way out of those types of situations. But I don't know. Maybe maybe it has something to do with Rainier Never Ember. Um, you're really not exactly sure. Um, but the, probably the, the best thing to do would be to check out that bar and see what you can turn up. Excuse me, Mr. Volo, everything, but I'll help you. Oh, excellent. Thank you so much. And Although so I worry Bill. if you go by yourself, you will run Bill's into trouble that's, you know, similar to how he did. So uh, hopefully your friends will go with you, yes? Bill will go. He went to get a drink, but Bill will Bill will go. Quick, uh, quick aside. As as the guy is describing how well known and how popular he is, you, everyone like Greg kind of like nods along. He's like, "Oh yeah, yeah, Volo, the great author. I know all about that." But anybody with anything better than a zero insight check will realize Gray has no idea who this guy is, even yeah. if he probably should. Like, if the guy is that well known, like everybody knows who he is, Gray has no clue, has never heard of him. Gotcha. Excellent. Or, or, or it seems like he's never heard of him. Uh, I'm in I as well. Look for your friend. Well, I think we all should. There's good yeah. money in it, and it's the right thing to do. Absolutely. Well, about this time, Bill wanders back with, uh, with about uh, six tankards that he's just kind of holding to his chest, sloshing ale all over himself. Uh, okay. Well. Uh, here's your drinks, guys. Uh, uh, yeah, there's no change. And he puts, he, he just kind of sets the ball down. Thank you, Bill. Thanks, Bill. Huh? And much appreciated. Bill, Bill is going to, uh, going to, to cup a bunch of coins in his hand under his palm and behind his back and, and, uh, face away from Mel. Sorry, you broke up in the middle of that. Describe that again for us. Sorry, yes. Bill has a has a handful of coins in his hand. His hand is behind him, cupped behind him, and he's facing away from Mel. And Mel is going to take the coins out of Bill's hands and put them underneath her skirt in a pocket. And she says, Bill, what he said was we have to find someone and we're going to do that. I gotta teach y'all some sleight of hand. 
<laughs> All right, whatever you say, Mel. What happened to my change? Oh, yeah, Dernan's a thief. You got to go talk to him. Hey, you do not talk bad about Dernan. He is not a fucking thief. You don't talk bad about Dernan. Oh, look, we got a job to do. Let's go. <laughs> Really, yes, please. Really the night does. is waning on, I, and I fear and every go, moment please. for my friend. You see, seriously, it's just I'm not to fight for myself, on. or I would go uh, chase, go uh, <laughs> save him on my own. Excuse me, sir, but I think you were going to give us all ten dragons, right? Of course, okay. yes. Ten he takes, dragons. Uh, he well, takes... Why didn't he say that before? <laughs> I did say that before. You were fighting <laughs> around over at the bar. Uh, he takes uh, several coin pouches out of his larger bag, uh, each that has been carefully measured out with ten uh, gold pieces in any hands. Uh, he sets them all on the table. There's one for each person in the party. I grab mine. Yeah. Uh, Oz takes his and then just he looks over at Gray for a minute. He's like, Gray's gonna wake to back. You. Yeah, I need to talk to you later. Very well. And uh, puts in his, puts the money up. Oh, very well. I'm so grateful. Please let me know what you find. Um, I, of course, will be here. I'm not a brave man, as I said, or I would go after him myself. Bill is biting you down on a coin. You should write a book about us. Well, if you uh, if you find my friend, I might try to find a way to work it in the next one. Yeah, I mean, you've probably already heard of me. My name is you... Ozymandias Buckshank. Ah, legendary bard and wonderful compatriot, carouser of the many, many bars. Honest to the core. Always honest. honest. Not a single false bone in my body. Well, that sounds like the kind of thing that is totally true and you would say to another person if you were really trying to convince them. So, you know, <laughs> I'm convinced. Uh, but I do have to say, unfortunately, and I've heard a lot of legends, but I've never heard any legends of you, my friend. Uh, but nevertheless, if you uh, manage to find my friend, Floon, uh, you will be uh, forever a legend in my book. And maybe literally in my book. I hey. Nice. Uh, and with that, he uh, sort of makes his way back over to the bar uh, to buy another drink from Dernan. Uh, Mel scuttles over to Bonnie and whispers to Bonnie, Bonnie, I don't think I can work for the next two days. Did 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 you talk to Dernan? Um, she says, well, now, I... Uh... That's all right, dear. We got on just fine before you were here, but um, I'll, I'll smooth things over with Dern. And you know how he gets after a fight like that. He gets all his his blood pumping and all, you know, rushing around. And sometimes he's uh, a little hard to deal with. So, uh, you know, if you want, well, I can smooth yeah, things I over really for you. I really don't think he likes me. He thinks I don't work very hard. Well, you know, there was that unfortunate thing that happened. And I know it weren't your fault now, but... It wasn't you know. my fault, Bonnie. Nevertheless, you know, you'll be all right. Just just keep your chin up now. All right. And as she as she returns to where she is, she goes to a different place and she goes over next to Oz. But as she passes Skull, she just kind of surreptitiously nudges Skull. Does he look at her? Arlo? Yes. I mean, he, he nudges Arlo. I'm sorry. He nudges Arlo. Does Arlo... Narlo, does Arlo look at her? Yes. What's going on, Mel? She she just quietly palms him the change that Bill gave her <laughs> and says, it's your change. No, no, it's okay. Just go ahead and keep it. I know. Are you sure? Don't worry about it. I think Bill tries to look out for me, but he we shouldn't all do. have given me your change. We all look out for you. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> We're right here. We can all hear they, this. Um, with a perception <laughs> check, would they be able to overhear the interaction between Bonnie and Mel? Um, yeah, possibly. Um, Bonnie and Bonnie or Mel? Uh, oh, between Bonnie and Mel. Um, were bon Bonnie? Were you or Mel? Were you trying to like be quiet talking to Barney like stealthily? Or? No, I just no? went over okay. to Bonnie and just said I couldn't. Yeah, hear then, then, yeah, I would think so. Yeah, I would. I would think you overheard that. Okay, so uh, real quick then, Gray is actually going to go ahead and roll over to the bar. 
and be like, hey, Durnan, buddy. Yeah, what do you nice want? Nice work back there with that sword. Uh, you know, you don't get to be a famous adventurer owning a bar like this and a magic-ass sword like that without, uh, without knowing what you're doing. You're absolutely right. Listen, uh, the, the, the author over there, Volo, apparently he's got some trouble with a missing friend, and uh, my friends and I, we're, well, we're, we're concerned and we'd like to go check that out. I am going to need to borrow one of your barmaids for maybe a day or two, specifically Mel. Do you think you, you could, uh, do you think you'll miss her? You know, I, I don't, I don't want to cause any, you know, mishaps for you or anything. I just don't want her to get in any trouble. She's going to be with me in the group. Sort of squints his eyes for a second. Uh, make a persuasion check with advantage because he is your friendly face. All right. That's a ten. You do That's have a bardic inspiration from well, the fight. But he I already, do have bardic oh, inspiration yeah, and it's less than, yeah, I'll allow it. Yeah, go for it. Let's go ahead and throw That's that a six, on six, there. Yeah. That's a six. He That's sort of max. squints his eye and says, ah, well, you know, the place usually isn't quite as busy the next couple nights after something like uh, what happened here tonight, so uh, I think we'll be all right. It's fine. Sir, you are a gentleman and a scholar, and I want you to know I appreciate you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mel was totally unaware that any of that happened, that Red moved away, because she's counting the coins in her hand. How much does she have that Bill gave her? Uh, I believe it is... Uh, it's two copper for a nail, right? Uh, yes, two copper. For okay, one so that... Uh, is it two or is it four? Hang on, let me look at my... Might be four. Boop, 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 boop. It's not me. Uh, sources, player's handbook, equipment, expenses... Uh, a, I don't want trade goods. I want booze. Uh, it is four copper for a mug of ale, two silver for a gallon. So however many mugs. So that'd okay. be 24 Six. copper. Or no, 32 uh, copper uh, out of a hundred. Mm -hmm. So that's 68 left. Thank you. Did so, you tip them? No. Okay. Oh. <laughs> uh, you guys are the worst. <laughs> I, I, I mean you did I, I will say you did help him kill the stuff and no one else did so he'll probably give you a pass for on some tips for that uh oz is all right skew a dragon snail street in corner of snail street and fillet lane i know where we're going all right maybe if you have one more ready. maybe if uh, you have one more drink you'll fully know i know the bartender i'll have a drink down there are we gonna go looking tonight? Are we gonna or in the morning? Well, it's a missing person. I feel like it's a little bit of a priority, especially with Absolutely. the one hundred and ten. I've only gotten into one fight today. Come on, guys. Two fights, Bill. Two, yeah. But I, but I, but I should have lost the first one. I wouldn't really call that first one a fight. Three honestly. fights, actually. More of a massacre. You had three okay. fights. Uh, look, who's counting? <laughs> Apparently us. People who can count to three. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, we're going to pop on back over the map here, folks. You for... see you see Bill with his hands going. The ley okay. lane and Snail Street. All righty, folks. Um, huh? Oh, that's just the, the street. No, corners. something... Uh, oh. Did I? I have... A... I have an interactive map of Waterdeep. My thing has stopped reacting to me here. I googled it. Maps. So hang on. I hate Let's... when that happens. Oh, you're if if you just uh, if you can refresh your page, I don't know. If no, it's will... on the it's on the. Yeah, this this the stream isn't keeping up with it. Like I can yeah. see the same map where. There we go. Blue, blue. Mission accomplished. All right. Okay. Ma, 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 ma. So I just okay, there we go. All right. So uh, you guys are currently at the Yawning Portal uh, here in the Dock Ward in Waterdeep. Um, and you are headed to uh, this area right here. Uh, yeah, and so really you like. are looking at about, um, I don't know, three quarters of a mile down the way or so. Um, and by this point, it is well on into the night. Um, it is pretty late. And you guys are uh, making your way through the night streets. Uh, it's still pretty busy, actually, out here in the dock ward, uh, even at this time of night. <clears throat> I'm going to swap making back to the main. Making a way downtown, walking fast. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, uh, Oz makes sure to walk alongside Gray so he can talk to him while they walk. So. Hang on. Uh, okay. All right. So um, as you guys are headed towards um, towards the uh, that part of the dock ward, along about the time that you get to, uh, I think, uh, the corner of Troll Cook Troll Crook Alley and Snail Street. Uh, as you kind of come down, uh, you see just around the corner uh, that the street has been cordoned off by the city watch. Uh, and lying on the cobblestones are a half a dozen corpses, seemingly the victims of some terrible skirmish. Uh, watch officers have disarmed and arrested three blood-drenched humans and are in the middle of questioning witnesses. Um, one of the officers sort of sees you guys kind of turn and look at the commotion uh, and says, uh, Oh, get on. Nothing to see here. Well, you heard them. Well, the fight's already over, so why bother? It seems like they don't really want us to investigate that much. <clears throat> okay. How yeah, we can, we, cut through, we can cut through Troll Cook and just cut down Zach's Well, no, they're, so they're on Troll Crook. So they are, you just are like walking by and you see that Troll Crook is, uh, is. Oh, okay. Then so what is, just, yeah. keep what exactly else. happened there? Um,. Yeah, so you see that there are um, six dead bodies lying in the street, um, and then there are three individuals who have been disarmed and are being questioned by the guards. Uh, they're kind of blood-covered, uh, clearly involved in the fight. Can we figure out, like, what kind of race are they? Or um, The three who are uh, um, there are human, I believe. Yes, the three who are there are uh, humans. Hey, Oz, you, you said you kind of know this guy that uh, we're looking for? Floon, yeah. What does he look like? Uh, yeah, uh, I will tell gives, you. Yeah, I was going to say, Oz gives a description. <laughs> yeah, uh, I believe I have, let me look and see. Uh, Floon. Um, uh, named NPCs. Floon. They did not give me a picture of Floon Blackmar. You assholes. Okay, um, they did give me a picture of the guy he supposedly looks like. Okay, so Floon, uh, you would know, is a, um, basically a flouncily dressed man, um, big, like, puffy sleeves that, like, come down to, like, hug his arms, right, with, like, like a, a doublet. He's got, like, shoes with, like, curly toes. Um, he has long red hair, and he has, like, a little soul patch, um, and he has sort of piercing blue eyes uh, and um, very, you know, fair skin. Uh, and all of the ladies just go absolutely wild for him. His hair has this sort of like curly windswept look all the time. Um, and actually some that. of the men go wild for him too, to be honest. Well, he sounds easy to identify. Hey guys, hang out on this corner for a second. I'm just going to get a closer look and make sure this guy isn't laying dead in the street. And uh, Gray is going to try to kind of stealth closer to the situation just to see if he catches a glimpse of this guy, either being questioned by the officers or, or laying in the, uh, the pile of corpses nearby. Yeah, okay. Uh, make yeah. a stealth check uh, for me. Oz and then is Oz, gonna, yeah, if Oz can give the help action by just like chatting up the guards, just being like having a long night, huh? Yeah, okay. Yeah, go ahead. Make a stealth check with advantage, uh, Red. And she's going to say, uh, oh, tell me about it. I know the feeling. It's a, it's a rough time. I've never here. seen so much blood in my with life. With the advantage, that's a 26. How do you 26. Stand yeah, so, it? Uh, so with a 26 round, know, it you were able to bad. kind of sneak around um, over, there's like a he there's like an alleyway between two of these houses and you kind of sneak around uh, and get a look. Uh, make a perception check for me. All right. You'd be surprised how much of this stuff you could swallow okay. before you pass um, yeah, out. Yeah, it's really hard to tell. Uh, you yeah. basically, all of the people are just dressed in this dark, dark clothing. Uh, there's blood what everywhere, but you don't see any red hair, although a lot of them have, like, hoods pulled over their faces or, like, uh -huh. you know, sheets have been draped over people. But this um, but this dude wore bright colors and pointy shoes. I don't see any yeah. of that. Yeah, you certainly don't see anything like that, no. Okay, all right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skulk back towards the group. Okay. 
<laughs> okay, I, I, I don't think he's here. We should probably keep moving. And when you think about it, it's basically the same taste as a copper piece. So you're telling me that blood is made out of copper? Huh. How much blood you got in you, Big Blue? That all right, well, with answer. that, we should keep moving. You all have a nice night. <laughs> Good night. Good luck. Okay. Okay, and then as you guys move on, um, I have a thing I need to add here. Sorry, that's Oh, not... my God. Whoa. Whoa. A giant number eight Whoa. flies out of the sky. <laughs> you get attacked by the, by the number eight. Roll initiative. <laughs> Okay. This episode is brought to you by. Okay. All righty. So, um, number eight. As you're kind of moving down the dock ward, tall, densely packed tenements leave most of the neighborhood in shadow at ground level. Uh, most of the street lamps have had their glass smashed and their candles stolen. Uh, and the smell of salt air and excrement linger as you pass by rows of rundown buildings. Uh, as you get to the corner of um, kind of the confluence of. Snail Street, uh, Presper Street, and uh, Shrimp Alley. Uh, one nearby shop kind of stands out from the others. Uh, it has a deep purple facade, uh, and in its windows hangs a stuffed beholder. Above the door hangs a sign whose elaborate letters spell out in gold uh, lettering, Old Zoblob Shop. Let me, uh, bloop, bloop, bloop. You should be able to see that now. And I'm going to pop over to the map so everyone else can see what I'm talking about. So, old Zablob Shop. Old Zablob Shop. And it just kind of catches your eye as you uh, as you make your way past. Looks pretty fancy. Let's go in as I start to go in. Okay. You, 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 he, uh, Gray kind of like slaps a hand on Arlo's shoulder. Be like, you know, I would love to come back here with you later. We are busy. Somebody is missing. <laughs> it's a... A All friend right. of mine. Heading again. But you're right. This does look very interesting, and I would love to come back. Okay. All right, then. Uh, so, yeah. So, you guys make your way down the rest of Snail Street to the Skewer Dragon. Um... Uh, and so, yeah, this new skewer dragon honestly looks like a mess. Both of the front facing windows are smashed. Uh, there's an anchors, a ship's anchor lodged in the roof, literally. Um, and through the windows, uh, you, however, can see a group of haggard patrons drinking from huge tankards. This is not a place where I want to gamble at. Well, it's fine. There's also oh. a purple palace down that way. Uh, I think sleeping wench is over there, and then if you go just down the road, the Hanged Man Tavern. Hang on a second. Lantern. One second. I gotta let my cat out of the room if you want to continue on your thing. I just, uh, I'm just going over right The back. Blushing Mermaid is uh, down by Spices Street. Uh, Keel Alley has the Blue Mermaid. Uh, a lot of sailors out there. You might get some cards or some dice. Cod Lane has the Mermaid's Arms. Uh, Asteril's Way has the Mermaid's Legs. Um... Presby Street has warm beds. That's the name of the place. The beds aren't that warm. Um, the Thirsty Sailor is on Two Flask Alley. Uh, Curtain Alley has the Midnight Sun. Uh, if you go down on Dock Street, you can find the Angry Coxswain, uh, which does have a prison cell that they, I'm pretty sure they sell slaves through. If we want, is if this we, why you never come do. home at night? How would you know that? He knows I, all the I, bars. I go around. I hang out at the bars. <laughs> you get I around, around, around. I get around. A lot. Uh, and this conversation sort of takes you through the doors of the Skewer Dragon as you entered into the uh, stale ale smelling um, garbage heap that is this bar. Uh, all around you see rather unsavory folk um, drinking mostly quietly. Um, not Certainly not the height of... Uh, excitement uh that was the uh the yawning portal Ugh, oz this place smells like you do yep it's uh i'll take that as a compliment well i didn't mean it as a compliment yeah i know you don't have to you don't have to finish <sighs> that sentence. um beatrice seems distracted as yeah. they go about their journey anyone who is proficient in um Insight can make an insight check. 
uh, regarding the patrons of this establishment for me. I got you. Hey. No. Oh, that's me. Not so great. Oh, oh no. Arlo. Okay. Wait, Arlo. I'm burn my inspiration. Why? He made the check. Oh, we did? Yeah, Arlo yeah, made Arlo. It. So Red didn't, oh, but Arlo made the check. I missed that. Okay, yeah. thank you, Arlo. Nice. Good save. So, um... Yeah, so Arlo, used to clocking people and reading them during your uh, your gambling uh, forays, you kind of look around the bar, and most of the people here uh, are certainly looking sideways at you all. They A lot of them appear to be, like, dock workers, but kind of run down, um, you know, dock workers. They seem sort of surly and, um, you know, unhappy. Um, but, you know, they're all kind of drinking to themselves quietly. They don't seem particularly well inclined to you folk. But you also don't see, like... A whole bunch of dangerous hoodlums or anything like that. So um, I believe that two the two cantrips I took for magic initiate were message and prestidigitation. Is that right? I can't um, I can't see them like on my character sheet for some reason. Yeah, I may have forgotten to put them on there, but yeah, I think that's correct. Okay, so I'm gonna like quietly cast message to. I, I think I only talked to one person at a yes. time. Yes. Okay. But it I will is, go ahead and it, cast it. On it is on the. You've got core, bio, and spells in the top. I oh, there it is. Spells. Okay. It's over there. All right. Okay. So I'm gonna like cast message to everyone. I think I have to do it individually, but it's gonna be a real quick thing. Okay. And I'm just gonna say, this place is not 100 percent what it seems. I think it's basically a crime front. So just. I don't think we're in any open danger. They want to keep a low profile, but do be careful in here. Okay. As as my old gambling habits have it, I oh, go no. to the I go to, I go like, to the, crime, you say. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I go to the bar the the bartender and I ask him, Hey, is there any place where I can um, you know gamble? I'm just going to, like, straight up say it. I'm not even going to hide it. <laughs> yeah, uh, so the bartender is a um, <clears throat> a surly-looking human woman, and she, uh, f- make a persuasion check for me. Oh, no. Wait, am I proficient in it? I mean, you should be. You're a, yeah, you're a warlock. Yeah, okay. One would hope. Uh, persuasion. Uh, no. <laughs> Oof, all those great rolls you guys uh, had during the combat have deserted you rolled them out. in this moment. They, they yeah, they really got rolled and cleared out. out. Uh, she sort of looks you up and down and says, uh, No, sweetie, no. <laughs> uh, Oz, Oz strolls up to the this bar. Like, yeah. You've got it, don't worry. Uh, if you add something, you can go ahead, though. Arlo, sorry. Didn't mean to cut you off. No, you you know you could. Okay, <laughs> I'm just uh, I'm just sighing in this this belief. <laughs> Bill, Bill, the Bill dice can standing, be cruel masters. Yeah, Bill is standing behind both Oz and, and Arlo. Yeah, uh, I know this. It's Gray knows this is a Zentarum. Right? Would Oz know this is kind of a Zentarum place? Um, because uh, you... he does know Devel Star Song. Yeah, and that's who he's looking um... for. Yeah, well, D- Davil would definitely not oh, be yeah. caught dead in a place like this. Uh, he okay. is much a fancy boy, and this is a non-fancy boy kind of place. Even though Floon and Volo uh, spent some time here, uh, they're kind of dummies and don't know what the fuck yeah. they're doing. Uh, yeah, so, um, but yeah, I would say it's fair for um, Oz to know this place's reputation. All right. Yeah, Oz is, can I get just a, a wine, please? Just a bottle? Something cheap? Um. Yeah, let me look. Wine bottle. We did eight silver for Yawning Portal. I don't know if this would for be the same general. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's. I think she. She. She's got a bad taste in her mouth from from the uh, from Arlo. So, uh, make a persuasion check for me. Oh yeah. Uh, uh it's kind of like rolls up and just tries to be nonchalant, like. This is a bar. T- they don't. They don't give a shit. So our. T- so Oz is just trying to be casual. Yeah. Twenty one. She says. Uh, yeah. All right. Listen. That's I'm fine. It's night. gonna cost you a gold. A gold piece. Sure thing. And Oz pulls out a gold and sets yeah. it on the. Uh, he's like. By the way. Uh, we had some friends come in here. I was here the other night with um Floon Blagmar. 
Uh, I haven't seen him the last couple of days. Do you, have you heard anything? Uh, yeah, make a charisma. Make a, I, yeah, I guess persuasion check based on the way you're playing this. All right. Uh, let me see if I've got anything to maybe give myself the upper hand here. No. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's try that again. Hey! Okay. Yeah, that worked. And it's back. <laughs> she, uh, she sighs and says, oh, those... Listen, after that Volo fella left, Floon stuck around long enough to meet with another friend, Rainier Neverember, the son of Lord Neverember's previous, uh, the previous open Lord of Waterdeep, Dagult Neverember. Chiff off the old block, that one. Another spoiled rich noble who likes to rub our noses in it. They drank, they played a few rounds of Three Dragon Annie before leaving around midnight. Five men followed him out. None of us here know what happened after that. Uh, the men who left shortly after Floon and the other one haven't returned since. Um, but word on the street is they likes to hang around a warehouse over on Candle Lane. You want to look for a snake symbol on the door. Snake symbol on the door, Candle Lane. Got it. Thank you very much, and... For your discretion, and uh, slides five gold across the bar. Uh, her mood seems to brighten considerably, and she sort of <laughs> nods at you and says, "All right, well, you and take care of yourselves." You do. And he uh, he winks and walks. And like we've got it. Come on. <laughs> Before we leave, I look at her and be like, "So you do gamble here?" She just sort of gives you this withering look uh, and says. Uh, we're particular with our patronage, let's just say, and you rubbed me the wrong way, fancy boy. Fancy? I don't find myself as fancy as them, but you I got you. and your friends is fancier than we normally ask around here. There's no pussy luck, all right? Mel is gonna oh. Mel, Mel is gonna grab a hold of Oz and whisper in his ear as they start to leave. We're bums and criminals. Hmm. Go ahead. Oz. For you you go around this town to all the bars. Does every okay. bartender in this town in this town have the exact same accent? <laughs> They're all from the northeastern United States. <laughs> it's honestly it's really it's pretty strange. Common. Well, in the dock ward, it's pretty common. Things are a little bit rough out here. Everyone kind of has to put on that face, you know. I wonder if you have to talk like that to get a job as a bartender here. There's a place out in the trade ward, the Gentle Rest. It's a nice old halfling lady. Uh, oh. she does not sound like that, but there is a place uh, out on Sale Street, the, the Pickled Fisherman. Nice old halfling lady. Sounds exactly like that. Same voice. Uh, you spend too much time in these places. You need to cut back. It's helping us. Well, it is. That's true. That's true. Did you notice she had almost as much of a mustache as that guy who hired us to do this job? I Except did. it didn't curl up. She does. I don't think she has the honey to style it. I hope that doesn't happen to all women as they grow older. And uh, Oz darts his eyes over at, at Beatrice as he like <laughs> kind of... Beatrice said, uh, like after hearing Mel uh, saying I hope that doesn't happen to women as they grow older, she's going to like like checking her face to see if she's got a mustache. Who is Mel? <laughs> uh, Gray's going to lean over to Beatrice and go, y y you're still young, sweetheart, it's fine. <laughs> uh, can I get the the, uh, the description of the area again? The description of the area? The, the, the place that she gave me. The uh, Candle Lane. And you're looking candle. for um, door. a door with a snake, a snake on it. Yeah. As they're all walking, uh, Gray is going to cast a message on Beatrice and say, you seem a little distracted. Is everything all right? Yes, I... Just this particular mission of looking for somebody has reminded me that my mentor is missing and I need help with that. What's his name? I don't. Uh, and I do apologize. This is in the adventure. 
His name is Beppis Honeymaker. <laughs> Beppis what? <laughs> yeah, they really went wild out with the names wow. in this. We've got Floon Blagmar and Beppis Honeymaker. Like the meme with Pepsi, except the name is wrong and it says Beppis. And they literally put that, I swear to God, those of you in chat, you can, here we go. Beppis. Bam. Where is he? I can't uh, believe I named my character Bill. Beppis. There he is. <laughs> right there, folks. He gave me a whole fucking sheet on the man anyway. So, yeah. Uh... That is not me being a weirdo. That is Wizards of the Coast <laughs> pulling some absolute horseshit <laughs> with the names in this event. Anyway, sorry. Resume your role oh, play. The is this, um, so so real real quick to the GM is Beppis Honeymaker somebody that I've heard of? Um, I'm gonna say no. Beppis Honeymaker is a honey merchant, uh, and this because Beatrice knows he's a honey merchant uh, and lives in the North Ward and sells honey in the northern part of the Trades Ward, and it's not a part of town that um, that Red frequents terribly often. It's okay. it's quite yeah, a ways did, away from the. This dock was ward, a private conversation, right? This is messaging, and none of us heard this. I'm afraid so. Yeah, I had to cut the rest of the group out for a second, but I, I, I noticed yeah. she was distracted, and I didn't know if she wanted to talk to the whole group about it. So, <clears throat> so, so she's gonna. It's a Beppis honeymaker. He, um, his wife came up to me today and mentioned what I had, like what I had already known that his, uh, like her mother, his mother-in-law. Uh, said that he ran off with some family, but we both know he wouldn't do that. I see. Did he have any enemies? Uh, none that I can think of. Hmm. Well, I'd like to be able to help you with that. I, I feel like, like the rest of us probably would too. That's probably something to bring up. Probably not right now, but like soon, you know, I, I, I if, you know, missing people obviously is a favorite pastime of this bunch. And uh, this is clearly important to you. Yeah. But right now there's dragons on the table, so. That's true. Should probably wait until this is uh, well in hand. Speaking okay. of, oh, wait, no, I'm not. I'm not I'm are, are, are you going to be all right to keep doing this job? Do you think you can focus? I can try. All right, that's all any of us can ask. And he's gonna keep, you know, yeah, trolling towards the next location. The thirsty throat is on Candle Lane. Fun fact: uh, right on the corner of Zastro, Candle, and Dragon Way. You go uh, to the thirsty throat. I have been to the thirsty throat. You it's know a little they water bit. their ale down, right? I know they do, but it's like I know most place. places do, but they really water it down. Yeah, it's also a lot of like sharp rusty metal around they don't really have a safety code i love that place <laughs> all right so as you guys uh, as this conversation between beatrice and red and then the rest of you sort of takes you all the way uh to candle lane you do find the warehouse in question as you approach gloom envelopes a narrow out a narrow alley dark as a dungeon and odorous as one too nearly all of the street lamps have been smashed the only light that pierces is a faint flickering from down the lane like a distant candle uh, and as you approach um the warehouse in question you see uh that it kind of stands at the back of the outer yard behind a high fence the gate on the fence isn't locked uh, and you can see there's a front door, a large warehouse loading door, a painted over window, um, and uh, you can see the, the symbol of the snake on the door. And as you approach, I believe that is where we're going to leave our first session here. We are right at about time. Um, so thanks to everyone who is still hanging out. Um, I We appreciate the heck out of all you guys. I like Bill's serious face on this part. Thank you, uh, Mr. McCoy uh, Buns. Thanks for hanging out. Um, so we're going to call that a session, folks. Um, super, super appreciative of everybody who hung out. Um, we're going to go down the line again, kind of reintroduce ourselves as people, give you a chance to plug your internet stuff. Um, this will be put up on YouTube here in a couple of days once I get it downloaded from Twitch. Um, and then we'll be back next time, same Dungeons and Dragons time, same Dungeons and Dragons place here on Twitch. So, um, to start with, my name is Pixel. Um, I 
currently uh, stream games over on Facebook at facebook.com slash hammer and pixel. Um, and I have a Twitch. If you want to check that out, it is twitch.com twitch.tv slash hammer and pixel. I haven't really used that much yet, but I may move over here one day, just depending on how things go. Um, we are also associated with ages of Ainor, which is kind of our, um, D and D tabletop role playing game, um, thing that we do. Um, right now, this is the main thing that we're doing with that. Although we do run one shots from time to time for people that we've met at conventions and things like that. If you're interested in any of that, um, you can message our Facebook page at facebook.com slash ages of Einor. You can also find us on Twitter. And then of course, you know about our Twitch because here you are. Um, and then, uh, yeah, uh, Jacob, if you will kind of remind everyone who you are and then, uh, we will just kind of go down the line here. Yeah. Hi everyone. I'm Jacob. Uh, there's not much else to me. I was in the last Ages of Vinor stream game, and I'm so happy to be here. This has been so much fun. I'm really excited for this. Thanks for watching. Yeah, excellent. Thank you. Uh, Redbeard. Hello, everyone. My name is Redbeard the Pink. I am uh, sort of a small-time internet personality, professional wizard, well, semi-professional wizard. I am fairly well known on TikTok. I am trying to get kind of a streaming thing going on Facebook. And I also have like a super old ass YouTube channel that I haven't posted on in forever. But if you search Redbeard the Pink on practically any social media, you're probably gonna you're probably gonna see me. But those are kind of the three main ones that I actually have any content on. But yeah, this this first session has gone really really well. I, I'm really enjoying it so far. I'm interested to see where the rest of the game goes. Yeah, we've had a blast. Uh, thank you for subbing to the YouTube buns. Um, Q29 Ball, thank you for the kudos. Thanks for sticking around and watching. Uh, Trish. If you'll just remind everyone who you are and sign off for us. Did you say Trish? I yes. did, yes. I thought you said Chris. I thought Chris. we yes, had somebody Chris. playing uh, this Chris, game. Will the real Chris, Chris please stand up? I am Trish, and I am the crotchety old hat lady, and I birthed two D&D &D mastermind geniuses, legends to be, <laughs> and I think that sets me above everyone else here. <laughs> Fair enough, yes. Uh, okay, Beast. Hey, guys. Uh, guys, gals, non-binary pals, I'm Beast. Um, I'm so glad that you all uh, stuck around, watched this first session. This is my first time playing D&D &D to any public audience, and um, I'm just happy to be here. I hope, you, I, hope, I hope you keep coming back. That's it. Thank you, Beast. Um, Skull, go ahead. The uh, same thing as... Um... Beast over there. This is my first time playing D and D uh, for an open audience. I do have a uh, stream uh, streaming from exclamation mark uh, skull. I'm gonna gonna be trying to stream next week, uh, possibly Re Resident Evil Four. Uh, but other than that, I mean, I'm glad to be here and hope to to make it to the end of this journey. Awesome, thank you. And uh, Haley, please. <clears throat> Uh, hello, Internet. I am Haley Comet, a little bit famous on TikTok, although it's kind of fallen off. Uh, wife to the wizard. And I wanted to thank you guys for joining us tonight. Yeah. So once again, thank you, everybody, so much for coming and hanging out with us. <clears throat> um, like I said, we'll be back here um, next Friday at 7 p.m. Um, we've had an absolute blast. You all have been lovely and amazing. And we will catch you next time. This is Pixel and Co. Ages of Einor signing out. Thanks everybody. Bye. 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 Later.